talk about the tough ticket. We were told the president of the university was looking for tickets on Friday, and he could find none. Mike Gottfried uh, is joining me on the telecast, and Mike, this guy right here, Kevin Falk, led the group out. He was jumping three feet off the ground. The question for him tonight, he's going up against a defense of Joe Kynes in Georgia that has turned into one of the very best in the country. Can he run against them? Ron, the big question is whether LSU can run the football against the Georgia defense. It's only given up 73 yards rushing per game. But really, the key, I believe, is Herb Tyler, the veteran quarterback for LSU. He's, he's come up big in big ball games, and he's the thermometer to this program. When he plays well, they win. He rolls out, they, he dropped backs, and he ran a key draw play against Auburn. He came up big in the Auburn football game. Mike, it's interesting. Georgia very young in spots, particularly on offense, but even though they're heavy underdogs, I say heavy, they're underdogs in this game, they're very confident also. Well, they have a confident coach, Jim Donnan, but he has a freshman quarterback, Quincy Carter, like no other freshman we've seen. But Jim Donnan will have to try to keep him under wraps a little bit early in the ball game just to keep his nerves down a little bit. Uh, no checkoffs at the line of scrimmage, call safe plays, and not let him feel comfortable and then turn him loose. Jim Donnan, the head coach, third season at Georgia. You see his numbers, first game against LSU. And across the way, this, this gentleman right here is uh, not only a big name in this state, he is a very popular guy because of what has happened with the fortunes of the LSU Tigers since Jerry DiNardo became the head coach. And I'll tell you something, folks, we got a heck of a break tonight. The temperature at game time, that is not, that is correct. 76 degrees. It's been in the 90s down here all week with heavy, heavy humidity. A good evening for the kids to show their stuff tonight. Champ Bailey to the near side, and here comes the kick. And this one is going to bound to Bailey at the three. And let's check in on the sideline with Adrian Karsten. Ron, thanks very much. Now, the heat index, as you said, is nowhere near what we expected down here on the field tonight. But fatigue can still become a factor for Georgia's champ Bailey playing in many as four positions tonight. The question is, when he goes directly from defense to offense, how quickly can he recover? So Jim Donnan tells me he will limit him in his role as a decoy player tonight. In situations, Ron, where he doesn't actually get his hands on the ball. So we have to look on both offense and defense for number four because he is a playmaker regardless of which side of the ball he's on. That was Wiggins in motion. And they throw it out quickly to the small. And he will take it for the first down. Going to be a game of large. Starting lineups for the Bulldogs, Quincy Carter. And he'll have Orlandis, Gary, and Patrick Pass behind him. The receivers, Michael Greer and Tony Small, the tight end. They have three very good ones. Larry Brown is the starter. And up front, these two tackles, Stenchcomb and Terry, could start for any university in America. And you'll see them work and work very well in this ball game tonight. Miles Lucky out of the football. He's the starter at center. In play. Here comes Pass. Has five, has ten, cut it off at 16 and now 17 yards as Cummings makes the stop. But the Georgia Bulldogs not only come out running, but the option is there. And Ron, what they did here in the early part of the ball game is they have two really good tight ends. Larry Brown and Jermaine Wiggins. They split the tight ends out right away and, and kind of really caught LSU by surprise. And then to run the option at the linebackers. Patrick Pass on the play. Pretty good scheme here by Jim Donnan early. So he comes out and hits LSU with a surprise and a scrimmage from the 47-yard line. Here's Champ Bailey. They try to get him outside on a reverse. And he'll be stopped after a gain of a couple just shy of the 50-yard line. Defensively for LSU. Mitchell, the guy they call Booger, Anthony McFarlane in the middle, and he is everybody's All-American, along with Jarvis Green. Miller, Wesley, Dunson, they get Jamal Hill back tonight. They lost him the first game against Arkansas State. And in the secondary, this is a good group. Cummings and Wood at the corners. Roman and Chris LeBlanc, who had the interception for a touchdown a couple of weeks ago in our Auburn game. There's a look at McFarlane. He can alter the course of any offense. First pass. Got him open. Throws it complete at the 39-yard line, and it's Bailey. 
Ron saved throws for Quincy Carter. He came on through a quick screen, then he ran the option and a quick out to Champ Bailey. But you can see right now, Quincy Carter's like no other freshman in this country. He's a poised quarterback, 6'3", 225, signed with Georgia Tech out of high school, then decided on a baseball career, then came to Georgia. Nice throw to Champ Bailey. So the Georgia Bulldogs have come out really firing, running the ball, then they come up with the pass and have Bailey wide open, and they own the ball at the 39 of LSU. Carter, right over the middle. Got one of his tight ends, and that's 89, Jermaine Wiggins. Ball is loose. Play, was it dead? Looked like the linesman was going to spot it down. The linesman did spot it down, and now they... Well, the offense for Georgia is still on the field. Yeah, I think the linesman's going to call it down. They are asking for the change in the measurement, so obviously Georgia will hold on to the football. Ron, Georgia has really good tight ends. This is Jermaine Wiggins going to hit a little delay over the middle. Linebackers clear. There's the pass. Let's see when the ball pops out. Now I think maybe it popped out a little soon. Mark Roman is the man who caused it as they stretch the change out, and it is a first down, Georgia. And you like, if you're Georgia, to come down here where noise is such a big factor at score right off the bat. Because what Mike's talking about is Georgia's scrimmages in this opening quarter. They're going toward their fans, the red clad in the end zone to the south. If they're headed the other direction, they're going into the student section of LSU. There you can see the folks from Athens who have come over. Three for three, 32 yards so far for Quincy Carter. Look a little confused coming out of the huddle here. Well, they roll the pocket, dumps the pass off. Larry Brown, the tight end, will get by one tackler and take it for five more yards as LeBlanc will finish him off. But Larry didn't look like a basketball player there. No, Ron, he lowered his 6'5", 270-pound frame. Again, a lot of formations by Jim Donnan here early trying to confuse the LSU defense. There's the powerful running of Larry Brown. This is a nice drive by Georgia. Good mix, mostly passing in this series. It's a one, one option play. Second down, the line to make is the 19 of LSU. Well, they got numbers in the run here. Straight ahead. Gary tripped up by Joe Wesley, and let's see, they're going to give him forward progress about a yard shy at the 20. Joe Wesley made a good play there. He has 22 tackles coming into this ball game. They like to protect him with the scheme that LSU runs. Lou Tepper, the defensive coordinator, he plays behind Anthony McFarland. And now Quincy Carter says, I want a timeout. He looked up at the play clock, which is already down at 14, and he calls the timeout. So we'll take the break with him. No score. The dogs are driving. At BASF, we don't make the sunscreen. We make it stronger. We don't make the tennis shoes. We make them grip better. We don't make the jacket, we make it brighter. We don't make the carpet, we make it tougher. At BASF, we don't make a lot of the products you buy. We make a lot of the products you buy better. Because of our passion for design and engineering, our vehicles speak for themselves. And recently, others have had some great things to say about our quality, too. Sebring Convertible. Country Total Quality Award. Cirrus, Best in Class and in Initial Quality by J.D. Associates. Concord, Best in Class and in Initial Quality by J.D. Power and Associates. Chrysler, Engineered to be Great Cars. I love lobster. Boiled lobster. Broiled lobster. Jumbo lobster. Baked stuffed lobster. Steamed lobster. Lobster noodle. There he goes again. Lobster roll. Sautéed lobster. I mentioned lobster stew. Boils the Cook's Lobster House off the coast of Maine. They'll give you lobster just about any way you want it. But bring your Visa card, because you won't get a bite using American Express. Sir, any suggestions? There's boil lobster. Visa, boil it's everywhere lobster. you want to be. 
ESPN's presentation of college football is brought to you by BASF. We don't make a lot of the products you buy. We make a lot of the products you buy better. And by Chrysler, engineered to be great cars. Well, Uggas got to like what he sees. Uggas standing in ice over there. That is really a smart yeah. dog, Mike. Third down, and they need about a yard. Pass is the lone setback, number six. Bootleg, got his tight end, Wiggins, and that'll be good for the first down, plus about five yards. No one uses their tight ends better than the University of Georgia. This has been a tight end drive. It's three catches for the tight ends. Jermaine Wiggins figuring that LSU is going to think it's going to be a running play. A little fake by Quincy Carter. Come out the backside, hit Jermaine Wiggins. And Quincy Carter, they've given him safe throws around here early, and he's hot. Mike, that's three catches by the tight ends already on this drive. And here, here's where they give LSU a problem, because they split the two, two tight ends out. Pass, triple for his own man. Ball. McFarlane caused the mess up in Italy, and they're going to say that he went down on his own and lost the football. So that was a trap up inside. They tried to split the two tight ends out, tried to get Ellis to spread out, and tried to hit Patrick Pass on a trap. Lost the three. Too much uh, Anthony McFarland, number 94, got too much influence inside. It's like he knocked the guard back into it. But you could see as he bounced on the ground, that's where the ball came loose. Tenth play of the drive. Second down, they need the five. At the four, five, touchdown. Champ Avis. Ron, you've got to know where he is on the field. He came into this ball game. He had 11 receptions for two touchdowns. When they bring him in the ball game, they're not bringing him in for window dressing. They're going to use him. Had a man hanging on him, and he broke the tackle at the five-yard line and took it in for the touch. And a half Hines will attempt the extra point to cap off what was an extremely impressive opening Georgia drive. So there's a timeout. 10.05 to play in this opening quarter. Georgia 7, LSU nothing. The mighty Chrysler. The 300 idea is the idea of a powerful, responsive, nimble automotive machine. The all-new 99 Chrysler 300M, the most powerful sports sedan in its class. As long as I've worked on this engine, I still get a tingle every time we open the hood. The Chrysler 300M. The technology has changed, but the soul lives on. Lease the all-new Chrysler 300M for just $3.99 a month. I'm grateful that Michael Garcia is in our lives. State Farm Mike Garcia speaking. We had a house fire, a house burned. That was a tough day. He didn't treat us as a policyholder. He treated us as a neighbor, as a friend. I gave him a check right away. We went from there to putting the pieces back together. He's not a hero in the sense of a sports hero or a movie star. He's a quiet hero. He looks out for everyone in the neighborhood. It's gone from being a slogan to really being my way of life. Are you OK? Taxi! Yes, guys. Prodigy Internet has faster download speeds, so you spend less time online and more time on life. Prodigy Internet. Well, you forgot last year, Saturday, 85,000 Gator crazies. sideline Mike we, we were just laughing about the oh, same thing that was great Jim, Jim Donald was talking to him about offense and Joe Kynes came over to talk defense a man coverage and right here's Champ Bailey working on the man coverage. he's gonna break inside of Damian Woods and that ball's right on and you see his little burst but it was funny Ron, because Joe Kynes came 
Come over Jim Donis talking offense. Joe Kynes, the defense coordinator, says, can you go the first series for us? Well, I don't blame him after no, he, what he you've may seen. be the best all-around football player in the country. There's no doubt. Holloman sets to kick it off for Georgia. Extremely impressive drive, and he kicks this one. He tops it. Going to be picked up by one of the up blockers and taken at the 36. And let's check in with Larry Beal. All right, Ron, Texas and Iowa State. Major Applewhite to Derek Lewis. Oh, he's wide open. 7 nothing Longhorns first quarter. So Mac Brown trying to put a couple of wins together here. Big win last week, and Ricky Williams over 300 yards. Now LSU has to answer here, Ron. Anytime you get a score on you, you're the home team, whether you're the home or the visitor, you want to come right back and answer. Fought, first carry for him, and that's Cochran who reaches up and grabs him to the ankles and makes the stop. As you take a look at the starters for the Tigers in offense, Tyler, of course, the quarterback, Tommy Banks, the oppressive fullback, along with Kevin Falk, the receivers, and these guys are good ones. Foster put on quite a show over against Auburn. The tight end is Kyle Kipps, and Abram Booty, obviously very good. Uh, Todd McClure, preseason, all SEC. Some people got him on their All-American list. Very good one at center. Here comes Falk. He bounces it outside. 5, 10, 15, and a flag is down. And that's going to be a hold as Dustin Lucky got tackled on the play. And this one will be erased. A 23-yard gain by Falk. Tackled by Harris. Rogers winning the referee tonight. Kevin Falk's going to get to the out in the zone. Yeah, you There's see the hold right here. Mm -hmm. And it's Kyle Kipps, the tight end. You can check Jersey there. You see number 50, Miles Lucky, with his hands out, saying, he locked me up. And the official was to see it. Tossed the flag, and very costly to LSU. That's, that's what the lineman looks at, Ron. He looks at the tight end. Our chest, the interior line. But the linesman is looking. He picked that up every time. Look at this line. I fish to the lineup, as well as me. Tailback and fought out with the wide receivers, Booty and also Foster, top of your screen. And they get it out to fall. He gets immediate attention, and Champ Bailey is there to wrap him up after a gain of a couple, a couple of really good-looking All-Americans facing off there. Ron, you see why he's he's an All-American Champ Bailey on both sides. He makes a touchdown catch, and then he comes right back against Kevin Falk, knowing that Kevin Falk split out now as a wide receiver, and the LSU coaches told me he may be their best receiver, and Champ Bailey makes that tackle. Also, let's give credit to Kirby Smart. You could see number 16 He read it all in. the way. Yeah, he gave quick attention to Falk and forced him into an area where his teammate was. Anytime they see Falk split, he's going to catch their attention, just like Champ Bailey should if he split out on the offensive side for Georgia. Third down for LSU, and might they need to take it out to the 46 and a half yard line. Tyler for the shotgun. Deep over the middle, got his man Foster, and that is enough for the LSU first down. Oh my goodness. He threw a clothesline, 19 yards, and they have the first. Well, Herb Tyler came into this game 40 of 59 with six touchdowns and only one interception. And he finds Larry Foster against Champ Bailey down the middle. Foster picking up where he left off at Auburn. This ball is a tad behind him. Look at the athletic ability here, Mike. Goes up and takes it down. And Ron, good pass protection by the offensive line of LSU. Gave Herb Tyler a chance to, to find the receiver. This is Spock. Going to be very short yardage. Mike, we probably need to mention the happiest person on the field when that first down was achieved had to be Kyle Kipps, who had been called for that holding and stopped the 23-yard gain a moment ago. Seven to nothing if you've just joined us. Georgia took the opening kickoff and marched 80 yards to score the touchdown, 79 officially. And for the young quarterback, uh, Quincy Carter, he was six of six for 63 yards on the opening drive. Now LSU trying to answer from the 50. Tyler, play action, got his man. Foster again. 17 yards on this pass play. 
look at the defense for the Georgia Bulldogs. The down three. Stroud, Leroy, and Richard Seymour gets the start tonight ahead of Paul Snellings. The linebackers, Cochran, Lucky, Hollingshead, and Arantis Grant. Dustin Lucky, number 50. And in the secondary, Chad Bailey and Jeff Harris are the corners. It's Harris they just picked on. Kirby Smart and Quentin Davis are the safety. Ron, they've taken Champ Bailey out. Now Glenn Ford's in. I'm sure he's winded after that offensive series. Draw play. Right up the middle. Inside the 30-yard line. Falk tripped up. I believe Orantis Grant, yeah, is the man who took his feet out from under him. And, and this is what the trade-off is. Now Champ Bailey's coming back into the ballgame, but you got to find spots to rest him because he's playing so much offense. He's impressed in defense. And when you're a secondary player, you're running a lot with the wide receivers. So you've got to spell him in certain times of this ballgame. Well, he's fortunate we had this temperature in the 70s tonight. Falk is four carries, 10 yards, but he'll take this one inside the 25 and down to the 20. That's enough for the first down for the Tigers. Quentin Davis, the free safety, knocks him down. And you have to be patient against this Georgia defense because they're not going to give you big plays. They're a bend but not break defense. They'll, they'll give you, they'll make you work the length of the field, hoping that you make a mistake against the defense. Well, interesting move right here. Fresh legs and Rondell Mealy checking oh. into the lineup. We saw what he could do last year against Notre Dame as he just shredded the Irish in that Independence Bowl at uh, Shreveport. The MVP in the Independence Bowl. Blitz coming off the corner. They run right there. It's Mealy. Has five, has ten. Counted off. Touchdown from 21 yards and a block. technology in the Seattle area may give the Seahawks a competitive advantage. What? What are you talking about? Computers, they may give the team secret strategies and such with data and feedback. Ah, that's a bunch of bunk. ESPN Sunday Night Football, the Seahawks against the Chiefs. The internet's the CB radio of the 90s. Tied at seven, Mealy with the 21-yard touchdown, and he and Falk are best friends. Falk very happy for his buddy to have scored. What happened, Mike? Tommy Banks is going to make a block right here on Kirby Smart, the safety. The safety blitz, they ran right into it. Got a good block by Foster on the outside. Rondell Mealy in the end zone. Oh, he did. Boy, he's very, very good himself. That's it. He won't return it from four yards deep in the end zone. So some of the capacity crowd that has barely been in their seats tonight, Mike. This is the kind of day 
game that we had kind of thought it might be. But are you surprised that both were so effective on opening offensive drive? I think the series by Georgia was outstanding. They used their tight ends, and LSU came right back. Herb Tyler did exactly what we thought he'd do. The veteran quarterback, he made some good throws. I don't know if that was a check off to the safety blitz. It was a And he is now seven of seven, and that play good for 17 yards. When nice block by Chris Terry, the right tackle just rolled the defensive end outside of Quincy Carter. You're gonna see him right here, roll him out. Give the avenue for Quincy Carter to hit Larry Brown. Two very impressive tackles on this Georgia football team, and two really good tight ends. So they're good on the outside. Here's the play, Ron. Here's where they like to split the, split the uh, LSU defense out here with no backs. Here comes the corner blitz. They pick it up, and the pass right here to Bailey, and he breaks the tackle, and he's free. Bailey inside the 40, and right from where they sent the corner with the blitz, Mike, is where they picked it up and threw Rayon Hill. And Ron, and, and you would think, and I'm sure Lou Temper, the defensive coordinator, is saying to his defensive secondary when he's on the field, number four, Champ Bailey, make sure. There's the block by Larry Brown on the blitz. Larry Brown saw the blitz coming. Here's the block right here that sets it all up. But they have to know where Champ Bailey's lined up. Too dangerous a threat. Well, the tight ends have really been a part of this oh, offense tonight. they've been tonight. big. They have looked really good. Five catches for the tight ends already. They set the screen. Gets it out to pass. There's McFarland. game the other day about Anthony McFarland that he's like Michael Dean Perry and he is an outstanding pursue guy 6'1 290 I don't care again about his height he there in the performance we have full one of the first mistakes by Georgia LSU likes a lot of two deep run, which means safety's on the hash. The middle of the field's open. Every opponent to this point has hit them in the middle of the football field. So in other words, what you're saying, it, you don't be surprised if the tight ends and the running backs catch a lot of balls. They'll right be a, they'll be a big factor in this ball game because you're always trying to get somebody down the middle. Here's a, here's a two deep scheme right here. Ronnie Bradley into the ball game. Carter shows his scrambling ability, drills the pass, has it complete at the 24-yard line to Michael Greer. And that's a nice job by Greer of coming back to help out his quarterback. Ron, Michael Greer was on a, a post route. He seen the trouble that Quincy Carter was in. He turned it into an out route, and he came back. Quincy Carter shows you again his gifted athletic ability. Scrambles around. Now he sees Michael Greer, and he has a strong enough arm to get that ball out to Michael Greer. Say what, Carter, pretty good start. Nine of nine, 130 yards. Can't get much better than that. Bradley and Arnaud, the two running backs for Georgia. And it's Bradley, hit behind the line and knocked down by McFarland. Well, Lou Tepper, the defensive coordinator, Ron, on the sideline, he installed this news to the Notre Dame game. Independence Bowl put about 30 percent in uh, the two deep scheme, and now uh, he's but every week. And his team is uh, defensively, they're under the tutelage of Carl Reese, who gone on to Texas. And it's an entirely different scheme for LSU. They're trying to grasp it. Second down, and Georgia needs the LSU 15 yard line. Carter, this sideline, and has it complete. Ran one option.
Gretchen. Uh, he is just off to a marvelous team. 49 of 59 for four touchdowns, but only one interception. He looks like he is poised. Ice water in his veins. No, don't jinx him. He's, no. he's 10 of 10, 145. I don't yards. think he cares what we say. <laughs> well, I know that. Quarterback draw. And he'll take it down to the eight yard line, or about the eight and a half, as Arnold Miller will wrap him up. Arnold Miller made the tackle. Your attention, please. Tiger Stadium, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, filled to capacity as number six hosting at number 12, the Georgia Bulldogs. Ron Franklin, Mike Gottfried, and Adrian Karsten. And glad to have you along tonight. Georgia took the opening kickoff and drove 79 yards. LSU came right back and answered. And that's how we stand at seven apiece. But the Bulldogs are driving again. Ron Camp Bailey's back in the ball game. Now let's see if they go to him or use him as a decoy. He's to the short side of the field. Right over the middle, small, breaks the tackle, turns it upfield, and he is close to the first down at the two-yard line as Miller again will make the tackle. Excellent effort by Tony Small, the wide receiver. A big play wide receiver for Jim Donnan's ball club. Made a lot of players miss on this. This should have been tackled right at the line of scrimmage. Small is 6'2", 215, a senior out of Jacksonville. Here's the replay, Ron. Tony Small, there's one shot at him. There's two shots at him. Arm tackles, and they finally bring him down. He's got three passes for 32 yards. First and goal, Georgia. Over the top, nothing doing. Landis Gary got greeted rudely by Joe Wesley, the senior out of Brookhaven, Mississippi. What a good job right there. What have to do with their Got me the tail back in the air, running in the Georgia out the half action. Better stay as he is very dangerous on the outside. Here we come with second down. This is the ninth play of this drive. Pitches it. So pulled up, quieted this partisan house at Baton Rouge and have gone on top 13 to 7. Mike, this is an interesting team, and you said it early when we had him against South Carolina. You better get them early because getting them late might not be a lot of fun. It's still early, but right now they're not a lot of fun. Ron, they have the closest athletes to Florida I've seen in this league. They're young, but they're only going to get better. Big block by Ronnie Bradley, 25. So 202 left in this opening quarter, and Georgia goes on top by a count of 14 to 7. And rare indeed, you see offenses take the ball and go right down the field and score, and that's what we've done, almost eating up the entire first quarter. Nine plays, 80 yards, 401, used off the clock. Gary scores the touchdown. Well, the most memorable of seasons in Major League Baseball continues later tonight for the National League Division Series. The Astros and the Padres are tied at a game apiece, and they head west. Tonight's game, 11 o'clock Eastern Time, Game 3 this evening, following a residence in college game night. I don't know if the Georgia got that ball on the last kickoff or whether they respect uh, Kevin Falk to help to keep it up. What, on the conference call on Wednesday, Sean and said, I will, I will not kick to the guy. And he's got a pooch kick right here. Just right here. You don't want any kind of field position, but they don't want Kevin Falk to get the ball any more than he can. <laughs> Camp Bailey on the sideline now. They've got the backup, Glenn Ford, in. And that's a key for Joe Kynes, too, to make sure that Glenn Ford's good enough and he feels he's good enough to, to play against these LSU receivers. 
Falk and Banks. Georgia 14 to 7. Falk in motion. That's who they're looking for. The pass is underthrown. That was a nice job coming up quickly, Jeff Harris. And I think out of the corner of his eye, Tyner could see it. He kind of cut the pass off a little bit. Ron, he's just a smart quarterback. And then talked to Morris Watts, the offensive coordinator. He said after the Auburn game, he could hardly practice. He took so many shots in the passing game and running the option. He had bruised ribs. They didn't run him last week against Idaho. You'll see him run some option tonight against Georgia, but they want to protect him. Him. Well, Joe Kynes told us when we had our conference call with him this week, he said it, it's where it starts. He said, Falk, obviously, but you got to stop this guy, number 14. Tyler, lots of time, lots of poise, and another completion to Foster. Larry Foster, the junior out of Harvey, Louisiana. Every time we see him, he's putting on some kind of show. Ron, he's getting better and better as a wide receiver, and Herb Tyler showing you a senior quarterback in action. I mean, he is so poised. Mickey Matthews, the de defensive secondary coach, said he's the most underrated quarterback in America. You see him just slide, find Larry Foster in his view, and hit him on the pass with Jeff Harris on coverage. Some of the folks standing at the top of the stadium, we were not joking. We said, I mean, it is SRO here in back rows tonight. Here's Falk, but he takes it inside the 45 to the 44. Arantis Grant is there defensively. And these two offenses tonight both have done a lot of good study and obviously have found holes in the other defense. They're taking a knife to both these defense. They're carving them up. Lou Tepper on his sideline. He's got his whole defensive group around him trying to explain what what George is doing to him and the adjustments that he's going to make. Second down. Falk again. Big opening. Has the first down as he lowers ahead and takes it to the Georgia 36 and a half. Grant again defensively. Al Jackson around the left guard of LSU really opened up a good over And then Tommy Banks, the fullback, also is in there. There's the block, and it was on Adrian Hollenshed by Al Jackson. Falk came off pointing to his eye. I don't know if he got a finger in the eye or what, but he came off immediately, and Rondell Mealy has come in to replace him. Right now, Herb Tyler says, let's stop the clock and take a timeout. 30 seconds remaining, opening quarter. Georgia 14, LSU 7. We'll take the break with them. qualify for benefits with Transamerica long-term care insurance, you can make yourself at home because you can still live at home. The people in the pyramid working for you. Mark, if you're at the airport before my 8 o'clock flight, maybe we can talk. Otherwise, it's over. Didn't get an AC Delco battery? They last up to 30% longer. AC Delco. If you're not asking for it, you're asking for it. insurance and your estate plan, you can be sure your money will go where you want it to go. The people in the pyramid working for you. Bert Jones in the stands tonight, former LSU great at quarterback, just explaining to, uh, to one of his young sons uh, a route or something <laughs> defensively that they were doing. First down, the First down, the LSU. Defensively, you could see that Lewis Williams just got pushed back by Cochran, and Cochran makes stop. Cochran. 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 Cochran.
But that's exactly right. He said he's like kicking off his feet, and he's the best defensive lineman for Joe Kimes in the front four. Joe Kimes makes you work to score. He's making LSU, not giving them many big plays, but they're opening up Georgia for the running game. Two wide receivers to the top of your screen. It's Booty on the very top and Foster. As Tyler under pressure gets his pass away, wide open right over the middle is Abram Booty. Quentin Davis made the tackle, but it's good for 22 yards, and somebody forgot number 22. I think Larry Foster ran through the middle of the football field, and they had a bust in the coverage because two players ran with Larry Foster. Larry Foster's going to clear out, and here's Abram Booty coming inside. That's a nice, Nobody there. nice athletic move by Herb Tyler, who had a lot of pressure on him, and he stepped up and got it off. First down, Tigers. The ball just outside the 15, and that is the end of the opening quarter. What an exciting quarter it was. Neither offense being close to being stopped by the other team's defense. 14-7, to 7, Georgia leads. Back with more from Baton Rouge after this. Are you concerned about losing more hair? Do you wonder how much further it will go? Do you wish you could do something about it? Well, now there's a pill for men with certain types of hair. Introducing Propecia. In clinical studies, the vast majority of men, 83%, maintain their current hair count and most 6% regroom hair. Take a daily as little as three months for men only. Only a small number of men experience certain sexual side effects. Each occurred in less than 2% of men. Women who are or may potentially be pregnant must not use it or handle broken tablets because of the risk of a spent birth defect. Talk to your doctor or pharmacist and read the consumer information they can provide. Propecia. Can make hair loss history. Test. America's most trusted lives up to its name. Die Hard. What's under your hood? The marvel of its aerodynamics. The sheer exhilaration of takeoff. It's enough to make an aerospace engineer jealous. Chrysler Concorde. Ranked best premium mid-size car in initial quality by J.D. Power & Associates. Now, Lisa Concord LX for $289 a month. Chrysler. Engineered to be great cars. When the market caught the Asian flu and the ruble turned to rubble, who was looking out for your interests? Instead of calling your stockbroker, you could be calling your own shots on the new E-Trade, getting free real-time quotes, breaking news alerts, continuous portfolio tracking, 24-hour access. It's the number one rated place to invest online. If you're interested in looking out for your own interests, call 1-800-E-TRADE-1 to find out why. Someday, we'll all invest this way. At Blank Road, we don't do everything well. Fortunately, beer is something to do well. Ice House. Thanks. yard line reverses it Kips just shy of the 10 and he is injured to his right ankle you see him reaching right back and grabbing that ankle but he's not heading to the sideline Ron Champ Bailey uh, again the corner he has really been out there this whole first quarter he played 22 plays in this first quarter of 33 starts off fourth quarter but he has been a factor on the offensive side and the defensive side by the way Mike 18 first downs between the two teams in the first half as Fox 
Clark is tackled. Ball is loose. And now here come flags from everywhere. And you can see Fox saying he was grabbed by the face mask because Miller made the tackle. Well, Williams likes it. Lewis, the big offensive tackle, he comes away applauding, so it must be against the Georgia Bulldogs. A personal foul. Wow, major. Against the defense. Half the distance to the goal. Automatic first down. So LSU is going to get this ball at about the five and a half yard line and there you see was tackled by the face mask that's the major and the automatic first down Brandon Miller number 51 with a face mask only three penalties in this game tonight LSU erasing a 23 yard gain with a holding call and this the first major penalty against the Georgia Bulldogs they had one procedure call from the five and a half Well, I guess look at it one more time, Mike. Same play, Ron. They ran against Auburn. Hit him. Hit him on a touchdown. Tight end block. Kips works out, play action, fake draws the defensive backs up, touchdown. Boyd ties it at 14. And I guess the biggest question right now is, will both offenses continue to do this? Can either defense stop the other team? We're tied at 14. We'll be right back with more for Baton Rouge. When you qualify for benefits with Transamerica Long-Term Care Insurance, you can make yourself at home. Because you can still live at home. The people in the pyramid working for you. Mark, if you're at the airport before my 8 o'clock flight, maybe we can talk. Otherwise, it's over. Come on. Come on. Didn't get an AC Delco battery? They last up to 30% longer. Battery. AC Delco. If you're not asking for it, you're asking for it. America Life Insurance and your estate plan, you can be sure your money will go where you want it to go. The people in the pyramid working for you. ESPN's presentation of college football is brought to you by the pyramid are working for you. And by AC Delco Automotive Parts. AC Delco, if you're looking for it, you're asking for it. LSU, Tiger Stadium, Baton Rouge, and a full moon tonight. Maybe that's what's happening here, Mike, as we went to break. We're just wondering out loud again to each other as you look at Kipps, who scored the touchdown pass. Both of these defenses are good, but neither can stop the other team as this kickoff is going to go nine yards deep for the end zone, and he will not return it. The serious fans of college football is to check out the ESPN game plan on pay-per-view get up to 10 extra games each week to get the season package and you'll see up to 100 games from around the country now to order call direct tv prime star dish network or your local cable company and ask for the espn game plan ron they start this series with champ bailey back in the ball game so they're using him a lot in both both uh, offense and defense he caught that kickoff so he's been very active look at these totals mike <laughs> Almost 200 yards for Georgia already. 
and really good balance for LSU. Bailey in motion. They throw the screen back the other direction. Oh, and this is Parker. Now here come late flags from everywhere. It's going to be on Matt Stinchcomb, I believe, a holding call. Johnny Mitchell ran him out of bounds. Jeffrey or Michelle Skinner. Stinchcomb said an interesting thing yesterday as we talked with him after the walkthrough. This is the first time he said, I didn't think I was going to get to play here uh, because of the rotation. They had not played LSU. And he said, when I was in high school, this is one of the stadiums I wanted to play in because I'd seen it on television. Yes. I had read. He said, I just wanted to come here and play because I'd always heard and read so much about the atmosphere. So he's getting to live it tonight. Yeah, I think all the Georgia players felt that way. They, they felt like they're good enough to come in here and play LSU. They don't care about the crowd. Well, now LSU had this happen to them a moment ago, and they picked up a third and long. Right now it's first and long for the Georgia Bulldogs. We have not had a punt in the ballgame as yet. That's Bailey, and they hand it off to him off the motion. And he'll take it out to the 26-yard line. So just like that, Champ Bailey makes it a second down, and they'll have about four and a half. Well, they're using him, Ron. I mean, they are... And they're lucky, like you said, that the evening is like yeah. it is tonight. It's cool. If it had been like it was last night, I'm not sure he could have done no, all this. No, he'd like. have been over uh, lathering down with some water right now. But, uh, again, they run him on the little reverse, and Larry Brown had a nice block and uh, picked up good yardage and puts him in second and medium. Jeff's mom had an interesting quote in a newspaper article on him yesterday. He's not much at trash talking. In fact, he didn't talk much at all. And his mom said, well, the Lord didn't mean for us all to be high and mighty and run around blowing our mouth off. <laughs> Carter, first time tonight he is sacked for the LSU Tigers, Mark Roman. Also McFarland. Yeah, the booger was in there because he made a push on the guards. And when we were talking to Jim Donnan the other day, he talked about how good Anthony McFarland is. He said, but we're not going to do anything special for him. He gets, a, he gets by the block of Jonas Jennings, number 75. They play him in that tilt position, Ron, to try to draw two people blocking him. All right, it is third down. And they need the 30-yard line to pick up the first. And George has got him spread all over the field. Here comes the blitz. And Carter with a quarterback draw. And he'll have the first down plus about five more yards. Mark Roman. And this guy, folks, he is 230 pounds, but he runs a 4-5. And any time you spread him out, you can look for a quarterback draw. And, Ron, that's the thing. He's like a running back at the quarterback position. So when you spread everybody out, watch this block by Larry Brown, number 87, right here on the linebacker. And that opens up Quincy Carter to pick up the first down. Tell you what, he took a pretty good shot there. Mark Roman came across and also had help from the other side. Alandis Gary this time is the only setback. We're tied at 14 if you've just joined us. Just over 11 minutes to play first half. And he's still perfect, isn't he? 13 off 13. Both guys will go get hot dogs because they're not going to be used. Quincy Carter waited perfectly. He shows you great patience here for a freshman. He rolls out to the right side. He's waiting for Tony Small to come clear. There he is, number nine. Behind the linebackers, Mark Roman makes the tackle. Good patience by the quarterback, Quincy Carter. Neither team, really, except for the uh, sack by McFarland, has put any pressure on the quarterback. Small four catches, 45 yards. Pitch the pass, but he can throw, and he throws it back to Carter, the quarterback. Carter finally tackled inside the 15. Yards 
And one of the things the LSU coaches said, Georgia always has three or four trick plays, and they're good with them. Ron, they made that statement. Jerry DiNardo said they ran four trick plays against their rival Florida last year. So he expected some trick plays in this ball game. But a lot of times when you're in man-for-man -man coverage, you don't account for the quarterback. You account for everybody, but not the quarterback. Robert Davis missed that tackle. Finally, Rowland came over and put the stop, and Georgia knocking on the door again as the pitch goes back to pass, and he's going to be collared with a head-high tackle at the 10-yard line, and that was Theo Williams, a junior out of Marrero, Louisiana, on the stop. Can't remember a game that we've done where the offenses have just gone up and down the field in the, in the first part of the ball game. Neither defense coming close to slowing down the offenses. You know, what's good, interesting. Good mix by the, by the play calling. Yeah. I think that's the key. Yeah, it really has been. Now you have to worry about tight ends down here now. Seven plays, 70 yards so far. Just over three minutes taken up on this drive. Carter zings it, has it complete. And Small got it with one foot inbounds. That's what the crowd is asking about. Ron, that was like fitting in it with a shoehorn. I mean, that's that's how tight the coverage was by Robert Davis on Tony Small. Again, the impressive way that Quincy Carter fires that ball in. He has great arm strength. 14 of 14, 175 yards for Carter in this first half. Number 30, along with Ronnie Bradley, number 25. Pitch to Arnaud. Tries to turn the corner at the two and is tackled at the one by Mark Roman. Roman, we have him unofficially for seven tackles. The only bad thing about it is he's having a great game, but when your free safety is making that many stops, it means the wrong folks are in his area. That was big, O'Ron, because that saved a touchdown. Sure he, did. he came from center field. He was Willie Mays on that play because he made up a lot of ground. Now, go back to what LSU did when they got down here. The quarterback on the option pass is available for Quincy Carter. Arnott is the man at the top of the eye. Carter hands it off to the fullback, and he will score, Ronnie Bradley. Right behind Chris Terry. Well, we didn't know if he'd give it to Arnott or not, because today is his birthday. But Bradley got the present, and he takes it in and makes it a 20 to 14 ball game with 9.32 left. Cap Hines tries to make it a seven point lead for Georgia again. He got it. So there's a break in the action. Just over nine and a half left until halftime. Georgia by seven points. Great, great. Yeah. That tuna. These AC Delco parts are about the most dependable you can buy. They should really help improve your performance. Come on, they're all the same. I think I'm out of this bushel basket. Okay. AC Delco. No matter what you drive, if you're not asking for it, you're asking for it. Who else but Sonic could take a great American invention like the toaster and go at one better? Introducing new toaster sandwiches from Sonic. Served on Texas toast, made fresh to order in your choice of bacon cheeseburger or chicken club. Both topped with crispy bacon and tangy smoked cheddar cheese. With a terrific taste of something totally different. They're the greatest thing since sliced toast. Drive in for a change at Sonic. This month, try our new chocolate-covered peanut butter shake made with Peter Pan peanut butter. Send your packages in two days with FedEx to lots of different places. You get lots of different prices. Send your packages in two days with UPS to lots of different places. You get lots of different prices. Send your packages in two to three days with priority mail to lots of different places. You get the same price. You know, $3. So, what's your priority? Priority mail from the U.S. Postal Service. It's Wisconsin's big guy, Ron Dane, against Purdue's high-powered offense. Purdue versus Wisconsin at 8.30 next Saturday on ESPN2. 
This Heisman Classic moment is brought to you by the U.S. Postal Service. 1982, Herschel Walker finishes his career with all-time SEC records in rushing yards, rushing touchdowns, and all-purpose yards on his way to becoming Georgia's second-ever Heisman Trophy winner. Oh, Kevin Falk within about the, just under 300 yards of what uh, Herschel did when he won the Heisman. As you look at Champ Bailey on the sidelines, and you know we were just talking to Adrian during the timeout. We we'll tried to get a report from him in a second on about the pace of the ball game and the fact that everybody is so into it that you know they're winded. But who cares? This is a great game to be a part of. Chad Holloman to kick it off for Georgia, and this goes through Faulkner's hand or Falk. Let me try it again. Foster. <laughs> Number 22, it went through his hand. And let's try Adrian. Maybe I could say that. Adrian? Ron, the pace of the game is, just as you described it, unbelievable. It affects both teams on both sides of the ball. So far, the only man who I haven't seen affected is the one who I thought was going to be affected by the fatigue, Champ Bailey for Georgia. I don't know just exactly how many plays he has gone so far, but they have kept him out of that decoy role, and he does get his hands on the ball when he's on offense. Now he's back on defense, looking as fresh as he did when he started the game. Well, the interesting thing, Adrian, that he is not winded, and he's been an impact on both sides of the ball already in this first half. Play action. Tyler gets away somehow, and it's still loose, loses the ball. And it looks as though LSU has recovered. Orantis Grant is the man who took his feet out from under him. And, and you see Herb Tyler, what he's saying right there, the coaches, I need to cover up the football a little bit more. He just stripped it. Orantis Grant, number 58, with the strip. But again, a big play by the senior quarterback, Herb Tyler. He was 4 or 5 in the first quarter, and he's made good decisions. Well, that right there, Mike, is a first down. He picks up 11 yards and could have been sacked for 10-yard loss. Mm -hmm. It was Robich, number 33. It was back there coming after him. Move off. Good. Heavens will oh. hit at the line of scrimmage. You could hear that thing up here. And Boss Bailey, and guess whose brother that is? <laughs> he is the younger brother of Champ Bailey. He's a freshman out of Folkestone, Georgia. And the folks in Folkestone who are watching this thing tonight can get a little excited about number 45. And, Ron, that's what I was saying about Georgia. They're a young football team. They've recruited well. They've locked up the state of Georgia. And they have a young ball club that is only going to get better. You better get them this year if you're going to beat them. Well, I'll tell you, if I'm Jim Don, and if there are any more Baileys coming up, I'd try to sign them right now. That is a heck of a bloodline. Even if they're four years old, you'll sign the scholarship. That's exactly right. Just go ahead and get that commitment. <laughs> Dead ball foul, false start against the offense, movement in the line prior to the snap. Five-yard penalty, still second down. So it'll be second and 15. Larry Beal, what do you have for us? Hey, Ron, maybe a letdown for Nebraska after their big win over Washington last week. D'Angelo Evans in the backfield. Hello, Raymond Cato and all of his friends. Oklahoma State leading 3-0, and Ricky Williams... 122 yards and 12 carries. Longhorns up 21-0. You know, Larry, the interesting thing, Oklahoma State sold that game. That game was supposed to be in Stillwater. As you look at Mealy, he breaks it big, and he's going to take it out of the 40 and pick up the first down. So Mealy has come in twice and had big runs when they have given Falk a breather. Uh, Tommy Banks led a good block there on the linebacker, and that sprung Rondell Mealy. You, when you see an eye tailback do the things that Rondell Mealy and Kevin Falk are doing, you're usually going to find a fullback blocking very well, and that's Tommy Banks. One other statement about Oklahoma State. They sold that game for 1.3. They said they needed the money for gender equity. <laughs> Mike, I'll tell you what. I'm not going to be surprised. Oklahoma State was my pick to win the South in the Big 12. They're a good football team. Plus, they get a win. They get to solve gender equity, too. Mealy carries it for a gain of a couple. What I had to get everybody's attention is Mississippi State, who has Johnson, the great running back, and is a good football team. And Oklahoma State got them oh, a couple of weeks ago. Out. Yeah. Warm out, Stillwater. About to go under seven minutes left to play in this uh, first half. Georgia 21, LSU 14. And if you've just joined us, 
Folks, this is the sixth possession of the night. Georgia's had it three times. They've scored three times. LSU scored the first two times they had it. They're trying to duplicate that feat. And we have 6.45 left until intermission. Tyler reverses it. Got him open. Throws it complete. And what a grab by Baggett. I beg your pardon. Kips 85 rather than 82. Went high in the air and got his legs taken out from under it. Well, Ron, when you have a good running game with Kevin Falk and Rondell Mealy, and you drag this play right like this, and you drag him over there, the linebackers get lost. Kyle Kipps, tight ends right behind the linebackers. Quentin Davis made the tackle. You have to respect the run when you got Falk and Mealy in there. Might consider this for LSU. DiMaggio, the huge one we saw last year, the 6'7", 270-pounder. Tore up a knee in the spring. They'll have him back as a through sophomore next year at tight end. Tyler keeps it, takes it to the 40, gain of three. Hollingshead and Brandon Miller combining in the stop. You talk about two great quarterback performances in this first half. When you look at Quincy Carter's numbers and then you go right back to Herb Tyler, what he's accomplishing for his ball club, neither quarterback making any big mistakes. They're just answering the challenge. It might turn out just like you said. One time, one scores. The other one comes down, scores. Now, this is LSU's time to answer. Between the two quarterbacks, also, if you just joined us, we have had one incomplete pass. That's it. Carter's perfect. Tyler's only missed one. Got him right over the middle. It's booty. Inside the 25, and he's down to the 23. And, Ron, one of the reasons you see the numbers like you do for the quarterbacks is no pressure on the quarterbacks. The pass protection, you see it right here, is excellent. And Abram Booty gets a chance to open up against Jeff Harris. So the offensive lines are to be commended on both teams because they're not letting anybody close to the quarterback. Look at these numbers, 14 of 14, 8 of 9. And between the two of them, 295 yards passing and two touchdowns. That's incredible. Nice oh, job I'm defensively. Who? Leroy came across and just destroyed the play. Big number 94, the 297-pound senior out of Albany, Georgia. Ron, the reason he made this play is he broke up the uh, line of scrimmage and then pursued down the line of scrimmage. There he comes right here, and he's playing. And once he flattened, he made the tackle on Rondale Mealy. That's the way to play as a defensive lineman. Flatten once you get pursuit, and uh, it flatten right down the line with the offensive lineman. It also shows what you can do if you weigh 100 pounds more than the man you're tackling. Just threw him down like a very light sack of potatoes. Well, Tyler does what he has to do, and that is call a timeout. You could see the play clock was down to one second, so we'll take it with him. There's a break in the action, 422 until halftime. LSU and Georgia, a good one. Rather go to a real race? During the Napa 500 Great Start Sweepstakes, you could win one of eight trips to Daytona Speed Weekend or the grand prize, a trip to Daytona, $10,000 cash, and be the honorary starter of the Napa Auto Parts 300. So come into any Napa Auto Parts store for details. Napa Oil, 59 cents a quart after rebate. The year's biggest savings are finally here. Thompson Chrysler Plymouth Dodge Jeep. Final 98 model closeout. We're slashing prices on every car, truck, and van in stock. 1998 Dodge Neon, now only $169 a month. $1,500 rebate or 2.9% APR. 1998 Dodge Dakota Sport Pickup, now only $11,792. $1,000 cash back. It's the biggest savings event of the year. Final 98 model closeout. Going on now at Thompson Chrysler Plymouth Dodge Jeep. We make buying easy. Didn't use AC Delco Rapid Fire Spark Plugs? They'll give you quicker throttle response and smoother idle, no matter what you drive. AC Delco. If you're not asking for it, you're asking for it. 
Quincy Carter on the sideline, the 20-year-old uh, freshman, 6'3", 225 pounds. He's from Decatur. Uh, he and Herb Tyler having as good a first halves for quarterbacks as you could just possibly hope for. And both offensive lines have been outstanding against good defensive fronts. Second down. They need to take it to the 13. Here comes pressure. Tyler didn't feel it, and he goes down, and that's Richard Seymour, a 290-pound sophomore out of Gadsden, South Carolina. And let's check in on the sideline with Adrian Karsten. Adrian? Ron, still comparing these two quarterbacks. Perhaps the only young man in America who can go out in the backyard and really portray Quincy Carter and have someone believe it is Herb Tyler. And that's exactly what he did this week in practice at LSU. First string quarterback one of the best quarterbacks in America goes down with a scout team and works the re with the reserve players to give the first string defense for LSU the best look possible the best man to mimic Carter is Herb Tyler well it's a great point Adrian and it's hard to get off the scout team a true look at the kind of speed and quickness that you're going to face and I'm sure he helped that defense immeasurably third down Stepping up, drills it deep over the middle, and Booty dropped it. It hit him right in the hands, and that would have been enough for the first down, plus four. It's not Tyler's fault. That ball should have been caught. Yeah, he threw it right on the money. Abram Booty had a shot at it, but the play before, Ron, when Richard Seymour made the sack, that's the first time pressure by Georgia. Jeff Harris on coverage right there. First time we're going to see a punter in the football First game. First time we'll see a punt. Jeremy Witten is the pooch kicker. And in watching him on Thursday in practice, he is outstanding at this. Flag is down. Kicks it for the sideline. And he got it out of bounds just around the 15 yard line, it would appear. Now the official is still walking up to the 16 and a half. Now let's see what the marker is about. Punt out of bounds at the 16 yard line. Now, procedure against LSU. I think I'd take the ball right here, Ron, not give him a chance to pin me inside the yeah, 10. Yeah, Jim Donnan's got to think I was pretty lucky on that one. Not a bad job by Witten, but certainly not his best. So for the first time tonight on six possessions, one of the teams did not score. LSU, the first one that has to kick the football. And with 3.20 remaining until halftime, it is Georgia by seven, and they get the ball deep in their own territory at the 16 and a half. If you're Georgia, you would love to have insurance points. But on the other hand, you don't want to do something foolish and give it back to the Tigers on your end of the football field. Good, good play selection here, Ron. That's what we've been talking about. Both teams, 14 rushes, 15 passes. There goes the tight end again, Larry Brown. Bounces off two tacklers. And let's check in with Larry Beal. Larry? Yeah, I got a baseball update for you. Red Sox and Indians runners at first and third in the eighth for David Justice. Connecting off of Tom Gordon. It's a double. Lofton and Vizquel score 2-1. Cleveland, that's the final score. Tribe win the series. We'll play the Yanks in the ALCS. All righty. You know, Mike, that part of the ballpark, you got to hit it. It's out of majority of the ballparks in the majors, and right there, it bounces onto the wall. And that's no prize draw on the Yankees. No, that's for sure. This is Orlandis Gary, and Gary will fight his way to around the 28-yard line. Clock is running at 2.35. It'll stop momentarily because of the first down. And look at these numbers. Quincy Carter. Remember last year on January the 1st, the numbers, as you look at Carter's, 15 of 15. But the Georgia record is 19, and that was our game. Georgia against Wisconsin in the outback last year when Bobo hit 19 straight. And we said that day, that would never be broken. Yeah, Barry Alvarez remembers that. <laughs> Barry probably could have given us that number. You're right. Draw play. Flag comes down. That's going to be holding. Called against Georgia. As Gary will have a gain of six on the play. Jamal Hill stopping. But that one was tossed by the umpire immediately. And that is uh, normally, yep, that call right there. Because he is, as Mike said, watching the interior lineman.
now we're on the decision you have to make if you're Jim Don and now do you want to turn it up a little bit or do you you just want to sit on this lead I felt before this penalty that he'd stay aggressive because you don't want to harness your offensive football team when they're coming out like Georgia is doing all of a sudden going to shell we just got where Mark Roman has 11 tackles in this first half for LSU the free safety out of New Iberia that's incredible well, the other thing you got to deal with if you don't pick up the first down, you got first and many here. If you punt it, you have to punt to fault, which is something that Jim Donovan doesn't want to do. Caught it, but he caught it out of bounds. That is great concentration by Thad Parker, but a nice job of coverage defensively for the LSU Tigers, and it'll be second down and many. And Ron, that stops the clock a little bit. LSU still has one timeout left, so they should get the ball back if they can stop him. Quincy Carter, I mean, he has been on fire. Most of his throws have been first. inside of 15. That's the first Incomplete one pass. that he's thrown incomplete. He did complete that just out of bounds. <laughs> That's right. That field had been 54 yards wide. That he'd, uh, he'd still have the string going. So Bobo's record is intact. And I have a feeling we'll be for a long, long time. Second down. They're going to take it all the way out to the 38-yard line to pick up the first. I think the 25-second clock went off. Or went down. As flags come from everywhere. We have a dead ball foul, delay of the game against the offense, violation of the 25 second clock, five yard penalty. Ron, what happened? Still second down. What happened on that play was the wide receiver was uncovered. He made a motion to Quincy Carter, like nobody's on me. So the uncovered receiver rule is the quarterback just raise up and throw the football to him. They just ran out of time. Well, now it's second down and 30. We have 142 left until halftime. Carter rolls the pocket, and he's just going to run it. 15, 20, 25 gets out of bounds, and now they'll look at a third down and less than 10 as Mark Roman has just recorded his 12th tackle of the first half. Adrian Carson, what do you have for us, big guy? Ron, consider the difference of the last two plays. What we just saw here is exactly what Georgia wants and needs to do. Get up to the line quickly, snap the ball quickly, so that the very cerebral defense of LSU, that is to say a defense who loves to look over that offense and take 15, 20 seconds to do so, so that they don't have the chance to do that, to read the offensive look and get into the right position. You can see the difference of the yard gain two plays ago and what Carter just did there. Well, that's true. One of the things that Jim Donnan told us on Wednesday, they would try to effect that in this ball game. Carter. Incomplete at the 47. McFarland and Miller applying the pressure. And for the first time tonight, we'll see a punt from the University of Georgia. That just play just broke up. It took too long for Quincy Carter, and he ran out of room because he rolled to the short side of the field. Standing ovation for this LSU defense. And now, let's see if Jim Donnan carries out his plan, because he just told us point blank, I will not kick to Falk. I'll kick it out of bounds. John England stands back waiting for the snap. End over end, and he did just what he said. He kicked it out of it. Listen to the booze from the crowd. <laughs> Only a 28-yard kick. <laughs> and let's check in with Larry Beal. Larry? Hey, I wouldn't kick it to him either. Coming up on the Buick Halftime Report, all around the SEC, highlights of Tennessee and Auburn. We've also got the Huskers in a struggle at the half, and the game day gang all over Penn State and Ohio State. That's coming up. Okay, Larry, our situation, 21-14, Georgia. When you do that, Ron, you give great field position. LSU has one timeout now, 121, and a veteran quarterback, so they ought to be able to milk this time. It looked as though Grant might have been calling for a timeout for Georgia just before the ball was snapped. And it is a timeout charged against Georgia, so uh, we'll take it with him. 120 remaining until halftime. We'll be right back. 
The University of Georgia has assembled a world-class teaching and research faculty on a campus with an established tradition of excellence. I'm Michael Adams. As president of America's first chartered state university, I'm committed to moving this institution to even greater levels of achievement. The future of our nation begins with the education of our youth. Please join me as we prepare the University of Georgia for another great century of service. At LSU, our vision is simple. We look at what can make life better, and we improve it. We search for answers. We challenge the mind. From advances in business, technology, and the environment, to contributions in health, education, and the arts, at Louisiana State University, enriching lives is what we do. Well, we're back in part of the packed house here in Baton Rouge tonight. Enjoying what all of us have been enjoying. This has just been a heck of a football game. 21 to 14. Uh, only two punts in the first half. And uh, this guy right here has had a say. He's a look at Quincy Carter on the sideline. But Champ Bailey, both sides of the football, has really been outstanding. It, it's been a great football game to watch, Ron. And I'm not sure that 27-yard punt's not going to come back to haunt Georgia right here. It's something to kick away from uh, Kevin Falk, but you want to knock it down the field a little bit uh, more than 27 yards. Now, I think what happened is, just like what happened with uh, the LSU kicker just a moment ago, it wasn't exactly his best effort. He was trying to knock it out down around the 25-yard line. No, but sometimes you can do something out of the ordinary and get caught by it. And LSU, again, the senior leadership in that quarterback position may make Georgia pay for that total yards in the first half Georgia 294 in the first half and 188 for the LSU Tigers <laughs> Larry Foster's had a big big half here let's see if they go to him First down to 10 for the shotgun. Stunt inside. The pass is thrown high. And that was Reggie Robinson that they were looking for. Larry Mann with the cover. The other route that has been very, very good for LSU is Foster and Booty on the same side and running Booty underneath after Foster drives deep. Yeah, they've had they had them both on the same side to the wide side of the field, but they tried to come back to the short side of the field to Reggie Robinson and Kevin Falk out of the backfield. Now let's see if they work Foster and Abram Booty on the wide side of the field. Get it off to Falk. He'll get what he can and get out of bounds. And that's good for the first down, I believe, at the 46. Corey Robinson makes the stop, and we have 67 seconds left. Well, the coach, Morris Watts, up here in the press box is looking down. He watched the first play where they tried to get the ball to Reggie Robinson. He had Kevin Falk open in the flat. Came right back with the same play. Figured if Kevin Falk gets the ball out in the flat against one defensive player, that's a pretty good odds for us. Yep, no question about that. It's a gain of 12. And he did get out of bounds. So 107 until halftime. And he is inside the 20 and out of bounds at the 18. 27 yards. Yeah, you, you can't give. When offenses are hot, I don't think you can give away field position. And the field position on that 27-yard punt, the respect for Kevin Falk, they have allowed LSU to use the clock, and they still have one timeout left. Well, the clock is really back in. Chains are set under 50 to play and now whistles all over the place. Maybe the whistles are because the chains were not completely set. Nope. Georgia has called a timeout. They have only 10 players timeout on the field. Georgia, their last timeout of the first half. Tigers have one timeout. Bulldogs, none. 
Well, next week, a great Saturday primetime game for you. Herb Tyler, the target of Florida's revenge. Well, this touchdown run last year led the way to LSU's huge upset right here at Tiger Stadium over the then number one ranked Gators. Game day starts you at 11 Eastern, followed by Indiana, Michigan State. And then at 7 Eastern, it is LSU against the Florida Gators in a game that you don't want to miss. Uh, Mike, Adrian, and myself will be down at Gainesville next Saturday evening. And that coach down in Gainesville has something about revenge games. <laughs> he looks forward to the next time you come down there. Look at this last year, Tyler, 10 of 17, 172 yards in a game against Florida. And, you know, one of the guys that is not back that chose to go early, but in, in looking at that promo we showed just now, Fanica, the guard, as we went back and looked at it, Mike, he blocked three individual people as he went down the field just in succession. An All-American that obviously they missed. Think if he were back this year. Oh, he was an outstanding offensive lineman. So time is back in. It is first down with 49 seconds left until the halftime. LSU trying to tie it at 21. Tyler runs up into the pocket, and he's going to be stopped at the 15-yard line, and that's Robich who reaches out and makes the tackle. And this is a key for what Joe Kimes does on defense. He substitutes defensive linemen, 12 defensive linemen for four positions to keep them fresh. Under 30 seconds. Now LSU does have one timeout left, and they're trying to save it. His tight end runs for his life, throws for the end zone, and that one hit our camera. <laughs> Just threw it away. There's <laughs> on the uh, on the boom. The ball hit it in flight. There was nothing open. He was trying to get the ball to Kevin Falk and Reggie Robinson on the short side of the field again. Well, it was, he was right on the mark. He got a cute ball right on the limbs. I hope it still works. Steve hopes it works also. 21 seconds left. It is going to be third down, and the line to make is the eight-yard line. One of two on third down conversions tonight as you look at Joe Kynes, the defensive coordinator for the Bulldogs. Blitz right up the middle, and this pass is caught for the touchdown on the count. I think Reggie Robinson. He got it, but it was Foster who the pass was intended for, and he got it on the count. seconds left and he does well there's a no saying that when things go right they go right and watch on this play it was not intended for Reggie Robinson because the defender was there and Foster was there but watch what happens well, he's trying to get the ball to number 22 Larry Foster and there's Reggie Robinson Number 47 with the catch. And that official standing right underneath the goalpost with the perfect view, and he says, yes, sir. He's inbounds. He has control. It is touchdown LSU Tigers. They made him pay for the bad punt. Gave him too good a field position with the time on the clock. Six plays, 57 yards, 106 to score. And we still have 14 seconds left. <laughs> and this full house has just been rocking and rolling from the opening kickoff, and there's no reason to believe it will not continue to do it for 30 minutes. <laughs> what a ball game. Looking in the eyes of Champ Bailey. Tim Wansley is back there with him, number two. As Danny Boy prepares to kick it off. Now this is a knuckler. They're going to get it at the 35-yard line. So LSU airs as they give the ball back to the Georgia Bulldogs. And, of course, no time comes off the clock. So 14 seconds left. And, Ron, here's, here's we want to go back to the punt. Georgia didn't want to kick the ball to number three, Kevin Falk. 
So now you tell your kicker to kick away, but he got a short 27-yard kick, went out of bounds, gave too good a field position for this LSU, LSU offense for 128 to go. Every and here's what the payday is. Looks like a bank shot to Reggie Robinson. Every golfer in the audience looked at that punt and said, shake. <laughs> and that's exactly what he did. It was good for only 27 yards, and it cost him. See if Georgia tries to, to answer or just goes in with a conservative reply. Carter got him open and throws it to Champ Bailey. He will step out of bounds at around the 40, oh, 48 and a half yard line. I like this strategy by Jim Dine. I'll tell you why. Because sometimes you, you ought to automatically say there's 14 seconds. Let's just kill the clock and go in. But he has an offense that's a, the aggressor tonight. And he doesn't want to put the blanket on him. He wants to keep him aggressive because he knows in the second half he's going to need a bunch of scores to beat this LSU football team. I like the strategy. He's working for three right here. Well, half Hines. 54 yards is his career long. Now, Georgia does not have a timeout left. Quick pass. They got it to Bailey, and he runs it back into the field of play and then gets out of bounds at the 35. So this would be, with one second left, if they elect to go for the field goal, a 52-yard field goal attempt. LSU was in a prevent defense on that last play. They were truly guarding the goal line. So Bailey brought it back into the middle of the field, realized he was not going to be able to pick up any more, used the clock, and runs out of bounds with one tick left. So Hines comes in, and this is going to be placed down. Quincy Carter is the holder. A 52-yard attempt. And now LSU's going to try to ice him. So they call their final timeout. ESPN Sunday Night Football. Warren Moon and the Seattle Seahawks looking for a win after seven straight losses at Arrowhead Stadium face the Kansas City Chiefs at 8-15. Then ABC's Monday Night Football. Brett Favre and the Green Bay Packers take on the explosive Minnesota Vikings in a battle of unbeatens from the NFC Central. ESPN and ABC, exclusive homes of primetime NFL football. So nobody's got any timeouts left. Hep Hines went out one time and they got it set for a 52 yard attempt. Then the timeout was called. The hot dog stands in the restrooms are going to be busy at halftime because nobody's left here. Nobody. In the first half. That's for sure. So Carter is back on. No field goal attempt here. They erased it, and they'll go for it with one second left, and he throws for the end zone. Bailey is down there, and it is incomplete. Damian Woods with the cover. We are at halftime. What a first half. As they head to the locker room, our score to halftime. And he tries to keep it away from Falk. And it's Falk who gets the football, and he's off and running, 35, 40, and out to the 45-yard line. And let's check in with Adrian Karsten. Adrian, run out of both locker rooms. Both coaches are resigned to the fact that offensively this is going to be a wild football game, and when they have the ball, that's the way they're going to take it. But Jim Donnan says we need to shore things up on defense. Our linebackers have been too many times dropping into coverage, man-to-man -man coverage. He also is concerned about his defensive line because of the 8-10 to 10 man rotation. What have been 4- and 5-yard pickups, if they need to play the entire second half, they could turn into 9- and 10-yard pickups. Falk gets the handoff, spins around in the backfield, and that's a great job by Seymour, number 93. Richard getting the start tonight ahead of Paul Snellings. And let's look at the comparison of the quarterbacks in that first half of play. Ron, again, you can't be better than they have been in the first half. And one, the veteran, Herb Tyler, and one, the young guy, Quincy Carter, that's going to be around for a long time. Maybe the best young quarterback in the country. I'm wondering if Quincy is having a stiff lower back or something. He has really been stretching him out over on the sideline. 
pressure. Tyler steps up and he's going to be sacked and it's 94 Leroy. A Marlis Leroy, a senior out of Albany, Georgia, and it's twice that they've gotten to Tyler tonight. And that's the thing Joe Kynes, I'm sure, talked about at halftime. We've got to get some pressure on the, the quarterback, and it's going to be the same thing for LSU. Slew Tepper, you want to pressure the quarterbacks when they got a hot hand. And Marlis Leroy, the 6'2 senior, beat Todd McClure, the center. And he keeps rolling those defensive linemen in so that they're fresh in the fourth quarter to chase the quarterback. So let's see what the Tigers come up with. Can they convert to open the second half? It's third down, and they need the 45 of Georgia. Tyler zings it. Well overthrown, and LSU will have to punt to open this third quarter. It's going to be three and out. So some alterations defensively for the Bulldogs. Let's see if the Tigers answer defensively. And Ron, good, good adjustments at halftime. Josh Mallard, number 98, who's the sack leader for Georgia, put pressure on Herb Tyler. So he had pressure on him on that series. Gibbs to kick it away. Michael Greer is the deep man. He stands back at the 20-yard line. Tied at 21, opening a minute and a half of this third quarter. Bear catch called for and is made at the 24. So it's a 36-yard punt and nothing on the return. Lucky seat prizes, courtesy of one of tonight's game sponsors, Associated Food Store. Ron Champ Bailey had a, a great first half all over the field on offense. He's plays on defense. He's 30. Special teams, nine when you total those up. I mean, he has been on the field. He's only had a few plays where he's been on the sideline to watch. And he's been a big part of the offense when he's been on. And he's LSU's picked on him a little bit on defense. They haven't gone away from him. They've thrown in his area. Patrick Pass is the lone setback. Seventeen of twenty, two hundred sixteen yards in the first half. And Carter swings it out to Larry Brown. He's going to be tackled for a loss by LeBlanc. Boy, that's like the seventh pass at tight ends for Georgia have caught tonight. Well, they're really trying to just get a quick screen on the outside. It looks like Quincy Carter's looking over the defense to figure out if he can run uh, inside against those linebackers. They moved out a little bit. He tried to get the ball to Larry Brown on a, a little screen on the outside. Will not count as a pass. That's a rush because that was a lateral. The ball was away from the line of scrimmage, Mike. The blitz up the middle. Carter. This is amazing. The guy is 6'3 and almost 230. And not only gets out of harm's way, but picks up 15 extra yards. And that's the strategy of Lou Tepper. He's going to heat up Quincy Carter a little bit more. They brought a linebacker on this play. But Quincy Carter, again, shows you his athletic ability. He steps up there, and they get pressure on him. They force him out of the pocket. And he made a smart move here, Ron, because he didn't go out of bounds. He wanted to pick up the first down. Looked like he was going to go out of bounds. Anthony McFarlane after him. He hurdles, and, uh, of course, Jim Donnan's holding his breath on the sideline to make sure he gets up. And Booger made sure he fell on him, too, when he came down. That brings the old 290. <laughs> A lot of cheeseburgers. Oh, my. First down. Carter, deep set this time. Wanting Bailey, and Bailey was being held downfield. Goes to the other side, and that's going to be incomplete. Now, here comes the flag for pass interference. Cummings got tied up with Small. And I think that's a good call, Ron. Yeah. Uh, and Tony Small did a wise thing. He kind of pulled up a little bit, which you tell your receiver sometimes to do. And uh, if the ball's underthrown, let Chris Cummins run into him. There, there is a second flag that's down. That could even be over on the side where Bailey was because he looked, that defensive back looked like a Siamese twin on him. I mean, he was just inside his jersey. Well, they're both almost together, those flags. Yeah. One was a little late. Conduct. 
be first down and 10 yards to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Have two penalties. But Jerry said, what is this? That's unsportsmanlike conduct. Against the Tigers, and unsportsmanlike conduct against Georgia. Ball's trying to be thrown to Tony Small, and there's the interference. Almost face guarding on Chris Cummings, and just didn't. Watch Bailey right here, contact. Mike. Bottom of the screen. Now, this is what I'm talking about. I mean, his arm. <laughs> Jamal Hill. Hill. He was holding his arms behind him, and he was right there doing a good job. So, the 15-yard penalty for pass interference, and then 15 yards back, but it's a first down. You almost think it had to be one of the players from Georgia saying something smart to the LSU player and the official here and then making that call. Yeah. Public safety building. Champ Bailey on the field again. You know that Lou Tepper is holding his breath right now. Nice job defensively. And he throws it away. Shows you a little strength there, Ron. 6'3", 225. That's not passing, uh, throwing the ball away. He, he no, threw where the receiver was in the area. Yeah, he had, uh, had a receiver right underneath it, about 15 feet underneath it. But it went <laughs> over his head anyway. If it were a field goal, it would have been good. <laughs> and Jarius Green put the pressure on three Is quarterback it? sacks coming into this ball game. Shows you a good leg strength. Great job of staying at home because you talked about back right. in the first quarter about how the defensive uh, ends were going to have to stay at home because of the big legs. Two good quarterbacks, quarterbacks that yeah. can hurt you if you don't contain them. Drills this one. He's got Larry Brown, and his big tight end is going to pick up the first down at the 49-yard line. Dunson is there hanging on to him, but Georgia will move the chains. They have done a nice job talking about Jim Donnan in Georgia involving their tight ends in the offense. This is a tight end, Larry Brown, 87. They flex him out a little bit against the linebacker, and that's a pretty good match. I, I, I circled the wrong guy. He's on the outside. Thomas Dunson finally made the play. But Brown. a nice, nice move of strategy by Jim Donnan. Four catches, 43 yards. from behind and a throwback screen and that's Greer and he'll have I believe the first down let's see where they spot him just very very close shy of the 40 as Woods makes the tackle nothing frustrates a lineman more than Anthony McFarland came close to getting a Quincy Carter but again a quick screen play call just to, to wear down the defensive lineman you're trying to get to the quarterback and then all of a sudden the throw See Anthony McFarland trying to get a little bit of a breath. No, they got it. So it's going to be first down, Georgia. The ball just shy of the 40-yard line. And you made an interesting point, Mike, just before we came out at halftime or to start the second half, and that is who's going to wear out first? And with two mobile quarterbacks, you're seeing right there, a Booger's down on one end, and he's winded because he's chasing a big guy who moves well. Uh, and I guess that that's what it's going to come down to. Yeah. Who gets tired first? And I think game? that Georgia has the advantage to this point because they substitute more people in the defensive line than LSU does. Georgia with 22 first downs now. Now that's movement by Big Crest Terry over on the right side. Came out of that stance. Now those kind of little things didn't happen in the first half. And one of the things that fatigue does is cause lack of focus and that's all that is right there. Bulldogs penalized five yards. Seven penalties, 67 yards against the Bulldogs. When you look at Quincy Carter tonight, he has had, uh, he sprayed this ball around to everybody. Tight ends, wide receivers. 13 of 15 to the wide receivers, six of six to the tight ends. That's Bailey in motion. And a quarterback draws what they want to run, and he got away from it. Boy, he was dead in the water. He's going to pick up five yards on the play. Theo Williams finally makes the stop. The worst thing about Quincy Carter is you're going to see him for four years. Oh, and boy. The other coaches. We had him first three weeks ago on ESPN2 against South Carolina. And we said that night that if you don't know the name, get to know the name because uh, you'll hear a lot of it 
uh, over the next four years. Well, tonight is is really a coming out when you play a good team in the top ten on foreign soil. Short drop, throws it complete to Parker. Just studded it right into his chest. Woods with the cover. Not much you can do about that one. And go back to last week. Last Saturday night, our ball game. I think Ronald Curry is going to be the same kind of quarterback. Yeah, once yeah. he gets settled in in, in the offense, it's, it's like the question you ask him, and you ask him about starting. He said it's Oscar Davenport's football team. Someday it's going to be his football team. Quincy Carter has the ability. Jim Donnan said it's your team. So it's a little difference in North Carolina and Georgia, but Quincy Carter's at home. 20 of 24 for 251 for Carter. Pass back into the middle and probably the most unwise pass that he has thrown. Dunson, or Dunson, was right there and he wanted Bailey coming back into the middle. And Georgia has a player who is down. And everybody just ran together there. Thomas Dunson read that screen. He read Champ Bailey coming back inside from the snap of the football. After the game, stop by McDonald's, conveniently located on the first floor of the LSU Union. They're going to get a breather say, for McFarland as Lucky is down, and it's Miles Lucky. So we'll take a break. 9.40 remaining, third quarter. Georgia 21, LSU 21. We'll be right back. Priority Mail from the U.S. Postal Service presents When All the Ballots Were Delivered. In 1961, this rugged halfback became the first African-American to win the Heisman Trophy. Can you name this outstanding college player? Send your packages in two days with FedEx to lots of different places. You get lots of different prices. Send your packages in two days with UPS to lots of different places. You get lots of different prices. Send your packages in two to three days with priority mail to lots of different places. You get the same price. You know, $3. So, what's your priority? Priority mail from the U.S. Postal Service. In 1961, when all the ballots were delivered, the Heisman Trophy winner was Ernie Davis of Syracuse. As the official delivery service for the Heisman Trophy, priority mail is proud to be sending out the ballots and delivering the vote. Introducing a sports sedan that sets a new standard of performance. And a touring sedan that sets a new standard of luxury. Here they are. Introducing the new TL with the satellite linked navigation system from Acura. ESPN's presentation of college football is brought to you by Priority Mail from the U.S. Postal Service and by the new 1999 TL Luxury Performance Pick 2. Welcome back to Baton Rouge. Total offense rushing 90 yards for Georgia, 71 LSU, 287 passing for Georgia, 169 Tigers. So it's 377 to 240 in total offense. We still got almost 10 minutes to play third quarter. Pass to Bailey, caught him in the middle, and he had the first down, then retreated as Roman makes still another tackle, and here comes Roman out of the ballgame, and he is limping favoring his left ankle or knee. Now, we had him for 12 tackles in the first half, and we'll get a check on uh, Mark Roman. Goes without saying, they, they can't have him on the sideline too long. No, he'll be a big loss for this LSU secondary. Quincy Carter, another nice job. He waited for Champ Bailey to come open. 13 tackles, we're told, for Roman as he comes to the bench. This one kind of doomed from the get-go. Kind of looked as though maybe he wanted to trail back. There was nobody. No, I think it was a quarterback sweep all the way. But Jarvis Green, number 59, he didn't give him any place to, to make a move. He kind of sent the offensive line back in, into Quincy Carter's face. There was no chance to make any kind of cut on the play. Second down. But Champ Bailey stays in the ballgame, Ron. I'm amazed at the number of plays he's playing tonight on offense. I have a feeling that uh, 
I have a feeling that the uh, defensive coordinator, uh, Mr. Kimes, is as well amazed. Boy, look at the pickup block. Deep over the middle, got a man there, and a touchdown to Tony Small. And Mike, the guy they threw it over was Clark, who had just come in replacing the injured Mark Roman. And sometimes, you know, you come into the ball game and you're not uh, warmed up. Ryan Clark, that was a jump ball is all that was. Tony Small just went up and grabbed it out of the sky and made that touchdown catch. Half Hines with the extra point attempt. Got it. 8-16 remaining, third quarter, and our new score, the Bulldogs of Georgia 28, the Tigers of LSU 21. I should have listened to my mother. When you're lost, the Accurate TL can help. Destination on the left. Happy place is still open. No. Yes, there. You're kidding. The cravings, the tea can help. Something comes between you and your destination. Hospital detour. The TL will get you there. Keep right. Introducing the new TL with the satellite linked navigation system from Acura. Rather go to a real race? During the Napa 500 Great Start Sweepstakes, you could win one of eight trips to Daytona Speed Weekend or the grand prize, a trip to Daytona, $10,000 cash, and be the honorary starter of the Napa Auto Parts 300. So come into any Napa Auto Parts store for details. Napa Power Battery, $32.99 after rebate. At the Attic Vintage Clothing Store in Las Vegas, the only thing that's out of style is using American Express. So bring your Visa card. Visa, it's everywhere you want to be. Florida hasn't forgotten last year. Saturday, 85,000 Gator crazies think payback. LSU versus Florida at 7, next Saturday on ESPN. Quincy Carter to Tony Small, and the extra point by Hap Hines, it's 28-21. It's a crossing route run underneath, and Tony Small is going to be running the end line in the end zone. He's working against Ryan Clark, who just came off the bench, and it becomes a jump ball situation. Tony Small just uses his hands, takes the ball away from Ryan Clark. As you look at the scoring drive, let's also give credit to one of those big interior linemen, Chris Terry. The big tackle came back and picked up Jarvis Green, who was pursuing the quarterback, and just that extra second allowed him to get the pass away, and it's a touchdown. If he doesn't make the block, well, then we got third down. Rondell Mealy. Mealy's going to be stopped just across the 20. Well, the most memorable of the seasons in Major League Baseball continues later tonight for the National League Divisional Series. Of course, that means the Astros and the Padres are tied at a game apiece that they had headed out to the West Coast, and they'll play it at the Murph. Game three tonight, 11 Eastern, following Residence in College Game Night. Falk hit in the backfield as they got penetration. Dustin L Lucky got a hand on him, and it's uh, time to check in with Larry Beal. Larry? They're on Texas and Iowa State, and Ricky Williams just tied the NCAA career record with his 65th touchdown, tying Anthony Thompson. Oh, did he fumble up the goal line? Maybe a superstar call there. 37-13 Longhorns. All righty. Well, you know, it's been a sad week for him as well. But, uh... The Heisman Trophy winner from SMU, Doak Walker, passing away, and they were very, very close friends. Hit just as the ball has gotten away. Foster, who has been kept quiet since back in that first quarter, runs into Booty, actually, and the tackle is made. Nice job by Glenn Ford, number seven, of keeping everything in front of him. He didn't give Larry Foster a chance to get outside. He kept the outside leverage so that he would get help inside. 
Here's, here's Glenn Ford. Now he keeps outside leverage and forces the play in so he can get some help. Also, let's give credit inside to Leroy, number 94, who was putting all kind of pressure on Tyler, forcing him to get rid of the football. That's been the difference so far in the, in the two drives. George has put a little pressure on. Third down, they need to 32, and he gets the pass away complete. That's fun. And the ball is loose and picked up by Georgia. This is Ford and knocked out of bounds at the 30-yard line, and the ball goes back to LSU. Well, let's go back and reclaim this one. I'll let you call this one. <laughs> Kevin Falk collided with one of his own players. He fumbled the ball. Then Glenn Ford picked it up, and then he fumbled it. Well, if it were a double play in baseball, it'd be six to four to three to eight to one. Here we go. Pressure, Georgia man coverage. They're firing Adrian Holland's head. There's the ball completed. To Kevin Falk, he's going to collide with a teammate, I believe. There it is right there. Glenn Ford picks it up. Kendall Cleveland's who he ran into, and then he got stripped. And Langley wound up with the recovery, I believe, here. Could have been a big play for Georgia. Whoa. It was Langley who knocked it loose. Glenn Ford. And Reggie Robinson made the recovery. The first thing Mickey Mac Matthews will do, the defensive coordinator next week, is show him once you pick up the football, tuck it away. Don't carry it like a loaf of bread. Well, I think we got all the parties mentioned, didn't we? Had them all. Pressure coming from behind. They throw complete to Booty. And he will make it to the 35-yard line. And let's check in with Adrian Karsten. Adrian? Ron, we're all trying to catch our breath down here, believe me. Even Jerry DiNardo, who's going up and down the sideline, telling his entire team, offense and defense, everybody, play to the whistle. Even when offense becomes defense in a matter of seconds, play to the whistle. Because the way to win this game, or potentially lose this game, is to give up before you hear that whistle. Now, nobody has slowed down in this one, I can promise you. And speaking of whistles, been a pretty good, uh, a, a pretty well officiated football oh, it game. Has been. Well, the teams have played well, and the officials have not had to do a lot of calls. Booty got it complete at the 45-yard line. That's good for a first down. When you start pressuring Herb Tyler, the first series out, they put pressure on him. Now, what does Morris Watch do? He moves the quarterback out of the pocket. Now, trying to stay one step ahead of defensive coordinator Joe Kynes, rolling him outside. Herb Tyler hitting. Abram Booty. <laughs> Joe Kynes. The official walking by. He was giving uh, his defensive signals. Pats him on the back. Always making sure that Todd is correct. Fuck, big opening. Has five. Has ten. Had it off at 16 yards. Boy, Tommy Banks again, the fullback. And that's what happens when Herb Tyler starts to roll out. Now you open up the running game. Kevin Falk, and that's the thing Joe Kynes worried about. He said the more he carries, the better he gets. Talking about Kevin Falk. We tell you what Falk told me yesterday. I said, you sleep well after you watch movies on Friday night. And he said, no, because I play the game ahead of time. And I said, before it's played, he said, yeah, it does keep me awake. I said, what do you do after the game? He said, then I replay it. And Herb Tyler tells me when I miss the hole. <laughs> Tyler rolls the pocket, throws it complete to Foster. Stayed, nope, he didn't stay in bounds. Step out of bounds, and they are going to say at the, what, 31 or 32, Champ Bailey pushed him out. He was already in the end zone, which is not adding to the official situation here. I was just thinking about what you said. Kevin Falk said if he played this game in his mind last night, then he didn't sleep at all. It's, it's because this has been an offensive football game. Oh, this is a great call by the official because his right foot came back and stepped right on the line as he reset himself. Here it is right here. Watch his right foot. Plants, sets. Look at this right here as he spins around. There it is on the line. As I said, a well-officiated football game. Mm -hmm, has been. Rogers ready, the referee. Well, this option play, uh, kind of ugly. Just not much happened. Well, they pulled the guard, Al Jackson, and Herb Tyler got connected with Al Jackson, couldn't get away from him. Rubich, made the tackle. So it's going to be third down. In the situation, Georgia 28, LSU 21. 
And the Tigers, to keep this thing going, need to take it down to the Georgia 30-yard line. And, Ron, you would figure Kevin Falk's going to be a big player in this third and fourth quarter, and that's a concern of Joe Kynes, that he gets stronger as the game goes. Well, they line him up at wide receiver this time, and he throws Foster right over the middle, dropped the ball. Boy, as many great catches as he has had in the two games we've had him on the air, that thing hit him in the hand. And, Ron, it, it was he's exactly right. Larry Foster should have held on, and Kevin Falk is also being defended by Champ Bailey, so they put their best player on Kevin Falk. And Herb Tyler comes with the football to Larry Foster, just couldn't hold on. Jeremy Witten, we had a pooch kick from him in the first half, and it was not as successful as he would have wanted. Got a little more room this time. Let's see what he comes up with. Very high. This may be too. Nope. He's going to be caught by an LSU player at the five. How about that? So there's a break. 4.46 to play. Third quarter. The dogs by seven. Nuclear warheads. I'm not afraid of the man who wants ten nuclear weapons. I'm terrified of the man who only wants one. The world. Shoot it! Take the shot! It draws its boundaries in ink. Korov crosses that border and those nukes are gone. We have a possible weapon of mass destruction coming into the United States. The Peacemaker. You don't need a ticket for the hottest seat in the house. We're throwing a party and you're on the guest list. Phillips presents Motown Live. It's the new sound of television and it's coming to your living room. And I'm your host, Robert Townsend. Just stay on your couch, you know, get some nachos, get some, you know, some dip and stuff, but I'll be there. Every week, Robert hosts the hottest stars of today and the legends that paved the way. This fall, the party's all the way live on Motown Live. It is. Premier Saturday, October 17th on NBC 26. The feel of smart design is the feel of flexibility. Schick Tracer FX is the only razor that flexes to cover every sensitive curve. A design so smart, you can feel it. Schick, the feel of smart design. And Purdue. 56. 28-21 our score. You can see just under five minutes to play third quarter. And the fortunate thing for Quincy Carter, Mike, to take over the ball at his own six-yard line, those are the Georgia fans for the most part in the lower deck that are behind him. If he was at the other end of the field, it could be trouble to, to hear his signals. And this is where LSU's got to come up big here. they got to keep Georgia down here, force a turnover, or keep them down here, forcing the punt. This is Patrick Pass, and he weaves his way out to the 11th before LeBlanc will come over and make the tackle on him. Well, I'll tell you, the Georgia offensive line's done a nice job on Anthony McFarland. It's become a passing football game. Quick passes against uh, Anthony McFarland. He's, I think he's had three tackles in this ball game, so they've been able offensively 409 yards not to have uh, the big play made by Anthony McFarland, the great defensive lineman for LSU. Jonas Jennings, number 75, came in to replace Miles Lucky at center. Patrick Pass, big opening. Boy, if he doesn't grab him by the jersey, speaking of McFarland, he might still be running as he picks up the first down all the way to the 25. And, Ron, that's the thing about Anthony McFarland, just talking about him. And he's a little frustrated in this ball game because it's not been his kind of ball game, but he makes this play. He's getting double teamed, and now he reaches out and grabs a hold of Patrick Pass and just holds on. But he makes the play, keeping Patrick Pass from break, breaking it in the secondary. And very quickly, Charles Smith, number 35, runs over and calls timeout for LSU. Elizabeth Fitz, please report to LSU Public Safety. Now some updated well, An interesting scores. situation when Coach DiNardo speaks. It appears that consumers listen down here in Louisiana. In fact, that's why a local bank has enlisted his services in a popular series of TV spots. Ah, oh, Mike! Mike! 
just leave the check on the counter. Tiger's banking. It's how Coach DiNardo pays. <laughs> now, we need to say that Jerry shot that. That was a real Bengal Tiger, but it was not the Mike. Mike Five. Uh, <laughs> Your arm might look like one of those meat trays if you tried to carry him in and out of the grocery store. Guy did a great job oh, on the pole, did. too. Oh, he did. <laughs> oh, boy. Let's check it with Adrian. I'm anxious to hear this. Adrian? Ron, the significant injury to Georgia right now is that Miles Lucky, the original center for the Bulldogs, has gone out of the knee with at least a hyperextension to his right knee and is out indefinitely. Significant because he was one of the men at the single or double teaming on Booger McFarland. You've seen what he's done here in the last couple of plays. Well, here comes the blitz up the middle as the pass is thrown. Got it complete again. That's Michael Greer. And, uh, boy, what a really, really tough complete. break for Miles Lucky to sustain that kind of injury and difficult for his teammates. One of the triplets that these guys have all contributed mightily to this uh, Georgia football team. Well, they really have, and uh, they're going to miss him in the center line and what Adrian was talking about when you can control Anthony McFarland uh, as Georgia has tonight and not allow him to be an impact player. I, t I mentioned the triplets and uh, they are from Stone Mountain Georgia Dustin Miles and Mike and interesting when you look at the difference in size the height about the same but 240 240 and 285 for miles in the middle. Even like Adrian. First down, Bulldogs. So it is the first down as they measure it. And they gradually are changing field position again, Ron, which is a good move by the freshman quarterback. The drive started at the Georgia six-yard line. It's Brown in motion. Ball is fumbled, and it appeared as though Quincy Carter got back on it. I'm not sure exactly what happened here, but sometimes the tailback has to take a little jab step to separate from the fullback. I'm not sure if hit that it. hit the fullback. I think it did, Mike. I think he couldn't get the ball to him. Let's, let's see here when you... Yeah, it's a fullback. See, the tailback has to jab a little bit to, to give the separation for the quarterback to get the ball in, but I think Quincy Carter just turned and flipped it to the fullback. A little One surprise of the few for mistakes yeah. that he's made. Well, that's true. Second down, they need to take it out to the 44-yard line. Incomplete. Parker trapped that one. It's going to be a third down situation. And let's check in again with Larry Veal. Larry? Wild finish. Kentucky and Arkansas. Cats down seven final seconds. Tim Couch who thrown for 498 yards just off the hands of Kevin Coleman. Arkansas hangs on 27-20. Oklahoma State has just scored to tie it up with Nebraska in the fourth quarter. Wow. Boy, a couple of wows there. That's a huge win. Arkansas playing very well. Here comes the third down play. Third down, and as I said, they need to take it to the 44. It's a pitch reverse, and what a play defensively by Jarvis Green. Tony Small, as soon as he got the football, got Jarvis Green. Well, under these circumstances, he's going to almost have to kick to fall. Yeah, he can't afford to do what he did before, the 27-yard punt. Well, he kicked it away from him, and it's now taking the Georgia roll, and it's going to go dead just across midfield. That's a 28-yard punt. We're coming up again this Friday on ESPN2. Brian Kenny and Max Kellerman host Friday Night Fights, your home for boxing news and classic fights. Frank Tate takes on David Telesco in our featured bout. It also will continue to chronicle the amazing career of the great Muhammad Ali. Catch Friday Night Fights every week at 8 Eastern on ESPN2. Ron, Brian Kenny does a nice job with Mel Kuyper and uh, the radio show in the afternoon, hitting every college game in the country, the ESPN radio show. It's excellent to listen to. So the Tigers with great field position. Tyler sets with lots of time. Ball is tipped. And almost intercepted by Kirby Smart. 
as you could see the tight end Kipps was trying to come over and get it. Of course, the minute the ball is tipped, all pass interference is off. Yeah, Kirby Smart had a chance at this play, and he was thinking interception all the way, but Kyle Kipps ran into him, <laughs> and, and co he couldn't get to the football. But he had that interception in his eyesight. And you know, LSU was very fortunate that the ball was not tipped a little more to the op was that open side of the field. Had a lot of red jerseys over there. Now, Corey Robinson's in the game number 26 now, giving another rest to Champ Bailey. Big pressure gets by. Gets by a second and is finally going to be pushed out of bounds at around the 47-yard line. Well, Georgia had people all over the place in hot pursuit of Herb Tyler as we check in with Adrian Karsten. Adrian? Ron, I'm right next to the LSU bench where Lou Tepper coordinates his defense with a classroom approach. Uh, he always has, as a matter of fact, and now he's taken that mentality here to the sidelines. Following every defensive series, each player takes his assigned seat to study the adjustments and tendencies he just saw on the field. And even the night before a game, Ron, the whole unit has to pass a videotape test and a written test. Players love the respect they have for this whole routine. Sounds like a lot, but it works. Tyler, ball batted down at the line of scrimmage, and it's Marcus Stroud. Marcus Stroud was one of the first big recruiting coups for uh, Jim Donnan. Everybody thought he was going to go to Florida, and he chose Georgia. You see, he gets his big hands up. Now, that's what you got to do to hurt Tyler. He's six foot tall, and that's stretching him. 6'6", six, six, Marcus Stroud. Defensive lineman, get those hands up. Jeremy Witten to kick again. That's the third time that Georgia has tipped a pass by him tonight. Michael Greer got what he could and went down at the 21. Spears. Well, we got that report from Adrian just a moment ago. We talked about the classroom approach on the LSU sideline. What does Anthony McFarland think of it? And it's kind of like a, a crash course right on the sideline. After every series, we'll come over and say, this is what they did to y'all. This, this is what's probably going to happen next. Here's how we're going to adjust to it. So it's kind of like it's kind of like having a halftime after each series. And, 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 it's, and it's been good. It's still now, instead of waiting a halftime, you can kind of, uh, to make your adjustments, you can make your adjustments during the game. And at halftime, you can kind of go over all of them and make any new adjustments. That's a good way to put it. Like a halftime, any time during the game. Small. As soon as he catches the ball, it's LeBlanc who is right there to make the tackle. And you remember it was Clarence who made the pickoff against Auburn, intercepting and scoring the touchdown. Yeah, Clarence LeBlanc, he just played this quick screen right off the bat on Tony Small. There's no room for an air here by Quincy Carter. The tight end's going in motion, Jermaine Wiggins, but he can't block the strong safety, Clarence LeBlanc, because he's right up on the play. Georgia needs to again change his field position a little bit. You're giving LSU too many chances with Le great field position. LeBlanc now with 10 tackles. So two of the set of the uh, defensive backs with double-figure tackles as the runner, Arnaud, breaks his tackle and brings it out over the 25. Boy, that, we had Roman for 13 and LeBlanc now with 10. Both the safeties with 23 tackles. Playing, playing very well. And Robert Arnon, the junior running back, and the player we haven't seen tonight is Jasper Sanks, number 28. So what I'm figuring is, Ron, when you get to this stage of your football game, of team schedule, and you don't play him right now, you're going to redshirt him probably. So you're going to see Jasper Sanks redshirted on the Georgia football team. Four fingers high in the air by the Georgia team. We are headed for the final 15 minutes. It is the Bulldogs 28 and the LSU Tigers 21. State Farm presents Rules of the Game. We're talking about the runner being downed by contact. In this play is the runner downed by the tackler. I do kitchens, I do bathrooms, I do family rooms. I do not do insurance. I want to be treated like I feel I treat my clients. I, I want to be treated like, like I am their only client. Michelle Dutzman treats me the same way I want to be treated. I have my cars, all of my household. I need somebody that I can get advice from. I know that when, they, when I need them the most, they're going to be there. Get to know your State Farm agent. It's a great relationship. We're talking about a runner being downed by contact. 
In this play, the runner is not downed by contact as his knee did not touch the ground. He may continue to run with the ball. Rules of the Game has been brought to you by State Farm. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Are you okay? Taxi! Yes, yes. Prodigy Internet has faster download speeds, so you spend less time online and more time on life. Prodigy Internet. Introducing a sports sedan that sets a new standard of performance and a touring sedan that sets a new standard of luxury. Here they are. Introducing the new TL with the satellite linked navigation system from Acura. It starts here. It starts here. It also starts here and here. And it all starts right here at Walmart, home of the EverStart battery. All the cold cranking power your truck, car, boat, or more will ever need. Power you can count on when you need it most. And since it's at Walmart, you can also count on a good price. EverStart. The name says it all. Well, we're set for the fourth quarter, and Mike... What an entertaining football game. I'm not sure we could have asked for any more for the first three quarters. And not many mistakes in this football game. Been a well-played game. They better keep their eye on Quincy Carter as a runner here, too. Not only a passer. Third looks down. like they're going to come after him. Right? And they need the 32-yard line. Here comes the blitz off the corner. Throws the pass and has it complete. The next, nope, incomplete. And they say Larry Brown couldn't hold on. So well, there's a big stop by LSU. Yeah, Lou Tepper with a good call. He brought pressure out of the secondary on Quincy Carter. Wasn't going to give him a lot of time to make a decision here. Larry Brown, the tight end in the flat. Mark Roman right on him. Couldn't hold on to the football, and he get forced to punt. Only the second. Well, it's going to be the third. Third punt by Georgia. The second by England. the ball and stepped out of bounds as soon as he caught it at the 45. Well, that cover guy had run right by him. I'm sure his eyes got a little big. They're thinking, I got something big in front of me. And you see an adjustment by Jim Don, and he knew kicking away from him wasn't good because they got a 27-yard punt and a 28-yard punt, so he figures, hey, let's just punt it to him. That's Maybe it'll help us a little bit. 40 yards on that punt and two on the return. So you're right. A lot better net than what he had been getting. As Bailey is on the sideline, you see how many plays he's run. And here's the trade-off, Ron. You've, you've got to have good backup corners because he's not on the field right now. Tyler, here comes a reverse. It's Foster. He gets one block. Gets a second, and he's going to have the first down as he goes inside the Georgia 45. And LSU saying, you got trick plays, and we do too. Well, Ryan Thomasy, I believe number 65, just leveled one of the Georgia players. Collins hit, I believe, oh, 24. I'm yeah. telling you, you talk about a hit. He's smiling because he knows in the film tomorrow when they show that film, he's going to be a big hit guy. First down for the Tigers. Thomasy from Cutoff, Louisiana. Fought, weaves his way, bounces to the outside. He's still going to wind up with about eight and a half yards of the play as Harris and Smart combined on the tackle. Let's check in with Larry Beal. We showed you Oklahoma State tying the score at 17. Well, Nebraska has retaken control on the punt return. It's Joe Walker breaking away here. 73 yards. Huskers lead it 24 to 17 fourth quarter. Woo! And no flag on that block in the back. <laughs> that Oklahoma State kid went flying after he got hit. <laughs> it was just a little block in the back, I guess. About to go into 13 minutes to play. The handoff to Fox. 
fends off one tackler, and he's going to take it inside the 25 to the 22. Davis hit him first. He spun off, and Witherspoon got it. Well, this is the concern of Joe Kynes because when you alternate tailbacks, Kevin Falk and Rondale Mealy, this is when it has to pay off in the fourth quarter. Kevin Falk just rips inside. Quentin Davis is finally going to make the tackle, but he's showing you now his strength and power in this fourth quarter. Just bouncing off, guys. Well, they say his knee touched at the 23. vicinity of the 16-yard line. In our conference call with Joe Kynes, he made this statement. He said those third and four-yard runs in the fourth quarter, because he gets better as the game goes on and you get tired, become 10 and 12. And that's exactly what's happening in this series. Joe just made a substitution also on the front as he brought Stroud back in and a couple of the other regulars who have been getting a rest. He got the number ones back in the field. Second down and three. Five. Big opening up the middle. Inside the ten. And he's down to the five. Outside the five yard line, it is first and five and a half yards for the touchdown for LSU. If Mike Bay score here, it might equal that earthquake game against Auburn. There's no doubt, Ron. And Kevin Falk now, four straight carries. He comes off the sideline. And the other problem is you got Rondell Mealy now coming in. Let's they see. lost to Diesel, but they got Rondell Mealy. Let's see if they give it to him. Banks is the blocker, and we got movement all over the place. Of the play. Dead ball, false start against the offense, movement in the line, the foul of the snap, five yard penalty, still first down. Jerry DiNardo, we were talking yesterday with him about uh, about family and friends coming in on uh, ball game weekends, and he said uh, Hotel DiNardo will be sleeping at least 18 people on Saturday night. <laughs> He got family and friends coming in. I think and their daughter's having a sleepover or something. Makes it a whole lot better when you win. Isn't that the truth? Draw play. Neely slowed at the line of scrimmage. That's a great job by Leroy. And he got just enough of him. And then Paul Snellings came over to finish him off. And look who's coming back. Kevin Vaught will check back in, and Mealy will come to the bench. Well, they're going to use them both, Ron. Now okay. they'll use Falk as a pass receiver. What they used this past week on Thursday, Mealy stays in the backfield, and it's Booty, Foster, and Falk. Falk who come to one side. And when you bring Falk out as a wide receiver, usually he is the number one choice. Well, if it's man, they go to him. If it's zone, they go to Foster. But they swing it out to Mealy, and he dropped the ball. Is that alive? Whoa, that was close to being a lateral. Late whistle on that play. Rondell Mealy trying to catch the flare out of the backfield. Herb Tyler using the three receivers to clear out. You could see that just the ball was just a off. little bit ahead. Took his eyes off the football. Cochran was the man putting pressure. Third down. And the ball just outside the 10 yard line. LSU ran a very successful quarterback draw in this same situation against Auburn. Falk sets. But Tyler, beg your pardon, under pressure, running for his life, and he's not going to get away. George is going to sack him way back at the 18 yard line. Josh Mallard is there to make the tackle on him. Well, Josh Mallard is an interesting player. Jim Donnan will not let him practice against the first-team offense because he wrecks the offense. He's had five sacks coming into this ballgame. Excellent pass rusher. Redshirt freshman, 6'2", 240. And he just wrecked LSU's offense. Well, he did. It's going to be a 35-yard attempt. Cobbin to attempt it. Low line drive kick. Did he get it? Yes, just through the left 
side of the uprights as he knocks it home. And with 10-27 left of the ballgame, our new score is Georgia 28 and LSU 24. So let's take a timeout. More from Baton Rouge after we pause for this. Where to stop our legend Mark Martin race when he wants great food, fast, fresh, and ready to go? Hi. Hi, welcome to Sonic. May I take your order? That'd have to be Sonic. Thanks. For our Sonic drive-in deals, your choice of five combo meals with fries or tots and any medium Sonic fountain favorite, all at a special low price. <laughs> Hey, Dean, we're on. Gotta go. What? No dessert? Drive-in deals made fresh to order at Sonic. It's like this. We like big engines, big tires, and riding up high. That's why we don't make cars. We think you'll see more of the world in a 215-horsepower Isuzu Trooper. Lease one for $289 a month for 48 months with $784 due at lease signing. Because the world is big, and cars just aren't. Okay, people, this is a phone, and this is a dollar. You still with me? Well, that's good. That's not number, and all your long-distance calls from home could cost less than a buck. That's right, with 1010-220, all calls up to 20 minutes are only 99 cents. Talk longer, and it's just 10 cents for each extra minute. No no contracts. Am I right, Poochie? Check out 1010-220, then one, then the number. Bottom line, you get up 20 minutes on this for less than this. You got that? Good. Because if I'm not mistaken, I think Drew's calling my dog. SPN's presentation of College Football is brought to you by Sun America's Drive, where we invite you to drive in for a change. And by Isuzu, specialized worldwide builders of adventure machines. Isuzu, go farther. We are back with 10:27 to play, 28 to 24. The Georgia Bulldogs, the number 12 team in the nation, trying to pull the upset over the number six and previously unbeaten LSU Tigers. This is Kessler with the kickoff. And this is going to be Chan Bailey on the return from the eight-yard line, and there he goes. Bailey could not get by the move of Damian Woods, but he brings it out to the 35. And let's check in again with Larry Beal. Ron, the Ricky Williams show continues, becoming the NCAA all-time touchdown king, breaking Anthony Thompson's mark, jogging into the end zone. That's 66 career TDs for Ricky, 47-26 Longhorns. Like a defensive struggle there. <laughs> well, it gives you, what, 10 touchdowns in the last two weeks? Bradley and Gary, the two running backs. going to be offensive holding as McFarlane comes over with his pursuit to make the tackle, but it was thrown by the umpire. Starting to make mistakes Gary, Gary. again. The holding call in the middle. Flag on the play. Anthony McFarlane keeps working in the inside, Ron. You know, he made such a penetration, Anthony such a McFarlane. jump at the line of scrimmage. He almost gets the quarterback. Look at this. He's he's on it. He's tilting. Mm -hmm. He beats the center's block, and now he keeps going down the line of scrimmage in good pursuit. That's a big penalty again. When you start in a hole like this, here's the play again. Man, Anthony McFarland getting in the backfield. No one can block him. He flattens down, makes the tackle on Ronnie Bradley. So it's first down, and for Georgia to pick up the first down, they've got to go all the way out to their own 46-yard line. Eight penalties, 80 yards against the Bulldogs. Might be a good screen down. That ball was knocked loose and went right into the arms of Chris Terry, the right tackle. And a flag has been thrown. Now, if they called it a pass, that's a reason for the flag. If he fumbled it, there is no, no flag. flag. That's it was right. a fumble, a fumble. Okay. Ron, again, good pressure. Anthony McFarland getting blocked by the center. Pressure comes from the outside. Jarvis Green knocks the ball loose. Chris Terry, a former defensive lineman, moved to offensive tackle, recovered that fumble. See Anthony McFarland. How tired 
This LSU defense is, but they got to come up one more time. Big. Second down. And their crowd is trying to help them as they always do in this stadium. Carter's pass caught on the comeback, number nine, small. And they'll mark him at the 31 yard line. Run up battles going on with uh, Chris Terry, the right tackle against Jarvis Green. I mean, that's an NFL type. Type of blocking situation there. Chris Terry, 6'5, 285 pounds against Jarvis Green. I mean, they are working each other. So the situation. It is 28-24, Georgia. About to go under nine minutes to play. Third down for the Bulldogs, and they need to take it to the 46-yard line. $289 a month for 48 months with $784 due at lease signing. Because the world is big and cars just aren't. I love lobster. Boiled lobster. Broiled lobster. Jumbo lobster. Baked stuffed lobster. Steamed lobster. Lobster Newberg. Lobster tail. There he goes again. Lobster roll. Sauteed lobster. Did I mention lobster stew? The Cook's Lobster House off the coast of Maine, they'll give you lobster just about any way you want it. But bring your Visa card, because you won't get a bite using American Express. Sir, any suggestions? There's spoil lobster. Visa, spoil it's everywhere lobster. you want to be. Showtime. On October 9th, this is important, Eddie Murphy's on the two. Whoa! He gave him yes. the chainsaw. Yeah. In the groove. The baby Jesus. No, that's not Jesus. That's no. Merv Griffin. And off the hook. How do you taste from that? It was a pinch. Mostly my... Whoa! Oh, it's a joke. It's herbal tea. Holy man. <laughs> Thank you, mine. Rated PG. Starts this Friday at a theater near you. It's a Big East battle on Thursday night as quarterback Al Clark leads the Hokies into Boston College. Virginia Tech versus Boston College at 8 Thursday on ESPN. As we back tiger stadium is just in a frenzy and look who is the guy who is putting them in a frenzy walk ran away from the huddle and started telling the crowd stand up and cheer and they've gone crazy that little kid will grow up and never forget that well he's pumped this crowd up Ron. now he's going to pump this offense up they're going to give him the football he's going to be a factor as we get to the 816 mark the strength of kevin falk from the 41-yard line at first down, he gets the handoff, turns it upfield, going to take it for a couple of tough yards as Grant and Antonio Cochran are out there to put the stop on him. Now it comes down to who who wins here because Joe Kynes has substituted his defensive lineman. They're fresh at the end of this ball game. Kevin Falk has been re relaxed, arrested with Rondell Mealy. So now it comes down to a championship fight. Now who stands here when this game's over? Joe Kynes 
hollering from the sideline. Instructions for his defense. It is second down at about eight. About to go under seven and a half minutes to play. Tyler sets deep in the pocket. Pressure's on. He's and the man to get to him. Some lucky. That's four times that they have gotten Herb Tyler. They brought Dustin Lucky off the corner. Joe Bennett said, I've seen enough of this. Herb Tyler having to throw. Mark Stroud is shaken up. Hold up, player. Shaking up the play. Joe Pines is as good a defense coach as there is in the country. You know, the interesting thing about this Georgia team is uh, Stroud is still down on the the uh, floor here at the uh, at Tiger Stadium and being a chat by the, the training staff. Joe Kynes said at the beginning of the year to talk with him, but he didn't know how good they were going to be. One, one point that he made, he said, I got a bunch of young, young, young guys that can't wait to get to practice. He said the unusual thing is they get there early and they want to stay late. They can't wait to learn. He said, I like that because it's an infectious thing. And he said, we may turn out to be pretty good. Yeah, he, he talked about this ball. What did he say? Something about if they'll bite you young when they're a young pup, they'll, <laughs> they'll be tough all along. But he, he brought some pressure on Herb Tyler on that last play. See Rodney Garner on the sidelines also. We're going to take a break. As Stroud is still down, they check him over. So we got time for a timeout. 7.15 left in our ball game. We'll be right back. Shaking up player. When you're unable to see Atlanta Braves baseball, you can still follow every pitch everywhere you go on 580 Talk Radio, WBAC. Every day on the CSRA's more than 50-year broadcast legend, we add the voices of Harley, Matt, and Mary Liz in the morning to Austin Oates, Ashley Brown, and Skip, Pete, Don, and Joe every time it's game time. Atlanta Braves baseball, possible by these fine guys, and found exclusively at 580 in your AM dial. 580 News Talk Radio, WGAC. Rather go to a real race? During the Napa 500 Great Start Sweepstakes, you could win one of eight trips to Daytona Speed Weekend or the grand prize trip to Daytona, $10,000 cash, and be the honorary starter of the Napa Auto Parts 300. So come into any Napa Auto Parts store for details. Napa Oil, 59 cents a quart after rebate. Four out of five men. What do you mean works? Regrows hair, or at least stops hair loss. My luck, I'll be that fifth guy. Probably not. But here's our guarantee. Give Rogaine extra strength and honest chance. You be the judge. It stops hair loss, or regrows hair. More hair, thicker hair, faster. Or we give your money back. Guaranteed. Rogaine extra strength works for you, or your money back. I can't lose. Stroud being attended to on the sideline as he helped him off, and it would appear that it is an ankle. Ron, you were just talking about, you said this has been a well-played ball game, and you hate to see anybody lose this football game. And, and next week, they're selling out in this ball game, and both have tough opponents next week. Georgia goes home to play Tennessee, and LSU travels to Gainesville against Florida, which is the game we'll have Saturday night. Third down. Tyler going to run it. He's Ran out of his shoe. He put a stick in the heart of Florida right here last year doing the same thing. Big play. They brought Adrian Hollingshed, the middle linebacker, and that's what a middle quarterback will do for you. Up the first down. 23 yards in the pass play. So Ellis owns it. First down. Georgia Counterplay. Falk goes to the right side, and he will have about three. That's Evans holding on to him. The last drive, Kevin Falk was the man of the hour as he ran the football continually against this Georgia defense. And now you figure, Ron, it's going to ball's going to be in his hands. 
But you, I mean, he is he is the guy. He wants it. 17 yard line, second down. Tyler and wisely didn't pitch it. Now you say wisely, Ron. He lost yards, but if he had pitched it, I think Falk would have lost even more. It may have been a fumble. Yeah. Number 93. Uh, LSU has not been able to get the option play on Georgia tonight. So the situation now is they're going to mark the ball down just 20. It is third down, and the Tigers need to take it to the 10-yard line to pick up the first down. And they trail by four points. And LSU wants a timeout. Tyler comes to the sideline and will take it with him. 5-19 to play. Big third down when we come back. It's like this. Like big engines, big tires, riding up high. That's what don't make cars. We think you'll see more of the world in a 215 horsepower Isuzu Trooper. Lease one for $289 a month for 48 months with $784 due at lease signing. Because the world is big and cars just aren't. I'd like to get my hands on her. Oh, yeah, I'd love to put her in drive. Say hello to the Blank Road Dream. Coming to a track near you. Thanks, and enjoy. Are you concerned about losing more hair? Do you wonder how much further it will go? Do you wish you could do something about it? Well, now there's a pill for men with certain type of hair loss. Introducing pro -P studies, the vast majority of men, 83%, maintain their current hair count, and most, 66%, regrew hair. Take it daily and you could see results in as little as three months. Propecia is for men, a small number, and experience certain sexual side effects. Each occur in less than 2% of men. Women who are or may potentially be pregnant must not use handle broken tablets because of the risk of a specific kind of birth defect. Talk to your doctor or pharmacist and read the consumer information they provide. Propecia. Help in the hair loss history. Well, as you can see, as the trainers work on the sideline, Stroud to come back to the ball game. They have re him, and they're getting that shoe ready so that the right foot will be 5-19 to play. Third down, just around the 10, and here comes the flag down. Movement in the uh, offensive line of LSU. Dead ball foul, ball start. Against the offense, movement in the line prior to the snap. Five-yard penalty, still third down. And let's check in with Larry Beal. Larry? Ron, you guys are having quite a finish, and check out this one. Nebraska and Oklahoma State. Tony Lindsay to Sean Love to the one-yard line. They need a touchdown to tie Nebraska. Final play of the game. They got stuffed. Whew. Well, close doesn't count. Knocked away and defensively, Kirby Smart is the guy who got there to make the play. Ron, he made it a, a great play because he used his right hand and he turned around and knocked the ball away from Larry Foster. Fans wanted a pass interference, but it was not pass interference. It was a play about a safety. Senior safety just uses his right hand and knocks that football away. Forcing the field goal. 41 yard attempt by Cobbin. You get one more look at it. Good pass. Ball is down plenty of distance. We got a one-point game. With 5.08 to play, the LSU Tigers have cut it to 28-27. And let's check in again with Larry Beal. Larry? All right, Ron. Just a little bit. Final play of the game, Nebraska, Oklahoma State. One-yard line. Stuffed Nathan Simmons, the coach's son, Bob Simmons' son, never had a chance on that play. Well, you can see the reaction by the coaching staff of Oklahoma State, and that old saying of horseshoes and hand grenades is the only thing <laughs> close is good in. And uh, but boy, what a heartbreaker, Coach Simmons and his club. What a gigantic upset that would have been. Nebraska finds ways to win so, win those kind of football games. Uh, Ron, it, the, the thing that sticks out most to me right now is LSU only has one timeout left. So 
they've got to have a defensive stand here to get that ball back. Champ Bailey, one of the two deep men. Wansley is back there with him. Clock shows 5.08 to play. Coming to Bailey's side, and it's returnable from one yard deep to the end zone. Next week on ESPN2, Wisconsin's pattern ram Ron Dane will on the move in prime time. 30 yards right in today's win in Indiana. He's now over 4,000 yards for his career. He'll finish off a triple header on Saturday to begin Western in Iowa and Cincinnati at Syracuse and Purdue in Wisconsin. Next Saturday, all on ESPN2. But the crowd is trying to help out one more time. Quincy Carter has that LSU cheering section to his back. Option A. Patrick Pass gets everything that he can, and Jarvis Green finally will force him out of bounds. Adrian, let's check in with you. Ron, all week long, Jerry Donato in press conferences, talking to Jarvis newspapers, Green. radio stations, Thank has said, you know, my defensive unit... I'm a little bit concerned about two. those guys. I don't know if they're up Second to the test. Down. Well, the Eight. defensive unit read that. And I talked to Burger McFarland yesterday. He says, well, you know what? His gamble paid off. We read that stuff. We heard that stuff. It's got us pumped up. Now is when we make the difference. His strategy paid off here, Ron. Well, Coach Donardo told us that. Yeah, that's right at the meeting yesterday. He said, they know that, that I have what my ploy is, but still it's been thrown out there in public. And he said, I'm doing everything I can to get them a little irate than they would be on Saturday. So there's a timeout. 4.52 remaining in the ball game, and we'll take it to Georgia. Their lead now has been cut to one. No, but I did stay at a Holiday Inn Express last night. What sets some people apart gives them the confidence to succeed on their own terms. It's no secret, it's the Wall Street Journal. Now you can have that confidence delivered for 13 weeks. Just $36.75, just 57 cents a day. That's a 25% savings off our regular rate, which makes now a great time to try this limited time offer. Call now, 800-356-9800. That's 800-356-9800 for the Wall Street Journal. Crowd coming back to their feet. <laughs> and, and that's not unusual here at Tiger Stadium. They're trying to help out. Their folks. Ron Orlando Gary's in the ball game now. He's a captain of this football team. He transferred here from Marshall. They faked a counter to him and the pass got it complete. Larry Brown and Brown is hit immediately by guess who? Mark Roman has just been sensational. Has had a career night. Mark Roman. He makes the tackle here. They they pick up a couple yards, but it's still third and six. The clock's moving against LSU. Ties a career record for Roman. He's got 16 tackles. Or is it 15? 15 tackles. One way breaks it. Sure, before Georgia came out in the series, the offensive coach told him two first down win this football game because LSU only has one timeout. You got to knock out two first downs. Four minutes, 10 seconds. Now 4.09. Counting. Third down. The line to make is just across the 30. And a timeout has been called by Georgia. Quincy Carter came to the line of scrimmage and the clock was getting short. So we'll take the break with him. Still a one-point lead. Back with more from Baton Rouge after this. Rather go to a real race? During the Napa 500 Great Start Sweepstakes, you could win one of eight trips to Daytona Speed Weekend or the grand prize, a trip to Daytona, $10,000 cash, and be the honorary starter of the Napa Auto Parts 300. So come into any Napa Auto Parts store for details. Napa Power Battery, $32.99 after rebate. You don't need a ticket for the hottest seat in the house. We're throwing a party and you're on the guest list. Phillips presents Motown Live. 
It's the new sound of television, and it's coming to your living room. And I'm your host, Robert Townsend. Just stay on your couch. You know, get some nachos, get some, you know, some dip and stuff, but I'll be there. Every Robert hosts the hottest part of today and the legends that paved the way. This fall, the party's all the way live on Motown Live. It is. Premier Saturday, October 17th on NBC 26. I got a question. How is she sleepy? <laughs> 80,297 on hand to see this one tonight. It is third down. Time is back in. Here comes Blake from the outside. Gets it away. And caught by Bailey. Oh, Champ Bailey. How many times you hear it said that people who are your crime line folks come through? Oh, my goodness. Well, put his name in the Heisman hunt because he's done all tonight, but I did also put a star beside Quincy Carter because he had tremendous pressure by Anthony McFarland to throw this football. Now, he decked him in the midsection. He couldn't follow through on this play. Takes the hit. Shows you the strength of his arm. Champ Bailey makes this catch. Goes up. Catches the football. First down, Georgia. One more first down. You turn out the lights. Clock is running at 3.39. Comes blitz off the corner. Alandis Gary trying to stay in bounds, and he did. You can see the official winding the clock. Green on the stop. Ron, I, I can't believe Anthony McFarland at this part. I, he beat the snap back. Almost disrupts his play. It causes a fumble. Number 94. Wins the center, gets back. Now he has his choice. <laughs> <laughs> to either take Quincy Carter or Landis Gary, pick her on one. Stenchcomb still trying to block in the middle and help Landis Gary just enough so that they don't lose yardage on the play. They better start double teaming in the corner. Quarterback draw. 50. 5 and he slides down. That is a Georgia first down. Carter's kind of walking like he's getting a cramp in that right leg. He's taking some hits here tonight. A couple well, times. Three by McFarland. Yeah, a couple times he's had a chance to get out of bounds, and he, he showed his toughness by staying in, trying to get the first down. Anthony McFarland again, number 94. Now they're doubling him. He still splits a double, but gets pushed outside by Steve Herndon. Quincy Carter. Picks up the first down, slides, he went, takes a hit. He kind of went limp before before he slid there. First down from the 38-yard line. Make it to 43, beg your pardon. Gary tries to get a block, and it's McFarland who is going to follow him to the sideline, pursue him, and make the tackle. Well, you talk about Champ Bailey. Champ Bailey made great plays to, to, to help his team win the football game. Anthony McFarland, there's no quit in Anthony McFarland. He's still trying to make plays. Gets double teamed by the center and Steve Herndon and breaks down the sideline to get the hit on the London Scary and knocks him out of bounds. Stops the clock. I hit Ron, he is, he'd be my player of the game for LSU. Huh? He is, there's no stop in Anthony McFarland. This is Bradley, spins off a tackle, does not want to go out of bounds. Joe Wesley grabs hold of him as he stays on the field of play, and now the clock is under two minutes. And I can't get over the poise of Quincy Carter. We talked about freshman quarterback. They made a big deal of that here at LSU this week. Uh, the, the news media and the radio stations about him coming in and playing in front of this loud crowd. And he's using the clock. He's doing the best he can. He's looking at the 25-second uh, clock. He's taking the play. He's running it down. He's playing an outstanding football game. Robert Arnaud. Checks into the backfield, number 30. He's there with Bradley. Arnaud is the tailback. Arnaud turns it upfield and is very close to the 30, which is plenty enough for the first down, and the Georgia crowd knows it. They are jumping and shouting with 117 to play. They may be now well within reason of knocking off the number six team in America. Sure is it. 
Quincy Carter's mom. Looks like some folks are excited and maybe tossing something from up above there. He's using that, that seat for a protection. And they'll take it on one knee. LSU has just used their final timeout with 50 seconds left on the clock. And Jerry DiNardo knows that once this one is over and they snap it back in play, there's not a thing he can do. And Georgia is going to come up with certainly the biggest win in Jim Donnan's short career at Georgia. Well, you take that Florida game last year and this one this year. And as we talked about early in this ball game, it's a young Georgia football team that's just come together under their coach Jim Donnan. And a fabulous performance by Quincy Carter. Well, tonight's Visa players of the game from the University of Georgia, Quincy Carter. You see his numbers defensively from LSU. It's going to be Anthony Booger McFarland. And as part of their continuing effort to further the development of amateur athletics, Visa is proud to donate $1,000 on behalf of these athletes to their school's general scholarship fund. Coming up next, residents in college game night with a full update from Larry Beal in the studio, plus Chris Lee and Kirk joining him on location in Columbus, Ohio. That's as soon as we're done here in Baton Rouge. Carter goes down on one knee. Carter takes a knee. It's a helpless feeling when you can't stop the clock. At the 36-yard line. Well, he'll take a knee here, and this one, you see Jim Don, and he's already starting the celebration. Watches that clock run down as Carter will go under, take the snap, and the Georgia Bulldogs, a football team that Jim Donham said... We could be pretty good this year, but most of the media in preseason said it's going to be a rebuilding year. Well, guess what? They are undefeated and have just knocked off on the road the number six ranked LSU Tigers. Ron, again, Quincy.